Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Essays and Espresso podcast. Today we're going to be continuing our Dark Knight trilogy. We're going to be doing a deep dive on the second Nolan film, The Dark Knight. But before we get into that, I'm going to introduce our hosts. I am Daniel. I'm with, I am uh, with my good cohorts, Acer and Boken. Acer, how are you? I'm good. I'm using a lesser microphone than I usually use, but we have to roll with it just through this episode. I'll have the better one next time we record. It's all good. It's all good. We'll uh, edit it in post. Yes. Well, I will. I will. And Boken, how are you? Uh, good. Thank you. Good. I'm good waiting for the, for the surprise that someone is yes. supposed to have. Uh, <laughs> yes, Acer, Acer says he has a surprise for us. I have a big like, surprise. Unironically we, don't, unironically, we have no idea what the hell he's talking about. So this is going to be a big surprise. A- and I just... I want to give, like, just let me tell people how the sausage is made here for a second. Spoken recently changed his profile picture, and we're recording over Discord, and I'm just looking at his dumbass new Star Trek. (laughs) 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 It's so funny. It's just like some goofy alien with a spoon on his forehead, like, laughing while he's drinking a, what is this, whiskey? What is he drinking? He's drinking Canar. And he's drinking some Damar. dumb alien juice. <laughs> he's like the alien best. Juice. He's the fucking best character on Deep Space Nine. Stop being a bitch. Isn't Deep Space Nine like really highly regarded? Yeah, it's one yeah, of the best yeah, shows that's, ever. That's the one that everyone likes. No, not true. TNG is the one everyone likes. But you want Patrick Stewart to die. Deep he Space Nine was kind of was kind of contentious at the time because it. Like, they didn't travel to two different planets. It was just wasn't, on the space station. Wasn't Deep Space Nine... Oh, no, maybe, maybe it wasn't Deep Space Nine. Maybe it was, like, Voyager or something. Wasn't there one of the shows which was, like... Uh, like, let's actually seriously explore the ramifications of the Prime Directive from very interesting angles. Well, I think that was Deep Space Nine because all right, they got right. dragged into, like, a galaxy-wide war. And mm-hmm. suddenly these people who have only known paradise have to face like real consequences and like question their morals and their ethics. That's Deep Space Nine, yeah. All right, all right. I think that's the only oh. one of these I'd probably like. I could probably watch a couple of like next gen episodes, but I feel like it's a bit too camp. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's camp. But I also hate Patrick I Stewart. Think, <laughs> I think you need who to watch Patrick Stewart. Why? I do. I do. What's wrong with Patrick Stewart? Ugh. Have you watched Picard? Knowing you haven't. <laughs> Stop! No, I have not seen Picard. Picard. <laughs> Stop! Stop! <laughs> I will never stop. Uh, he's okay. the reason this fucking show even exists, and it's probably he's so like, bad. Dude, he's like eighty. Yeah, he's like eighty. He, he was also in. Uh, he was also in Doctor Strange. He was? Yeah. Yeah, he was Professor X. He wheeled in, he would like rolled in on the yellow wheelchair and the X-Men theme played like da 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 Was this was... in the Sam Raimi multiverse movie? Yeah, how do you not know this? Because I never watched that movie. You mean I either, didn't watch it either. <laughs> everywhere on Twitter. Oh. Well, I don't know. I guess I just Did you didn't know that John Krasinski was in the movie? No. Uh, well, he was Mr. Fantastic. Oh. Oh, uh, and those fucking terrible, like, mid-2000s movies? Those movies? No, in the, in the new one, right? Like, like the upcoming one. Uh, I don't think they've confirmed that he's going to be Mr. Fantastic in that one. Um, but, but, like, the mid-2000s... How can you, but, but you need yeah. to have a plan. Like, if you're showing Mr. Fantastic, why not bring in the guy who's actually Mr. Fantastic. Uh, because it was just like a fan casting thing. They were like, yeah, let's just give the fans what they want. Like, we were supposed to get F- Fantastic Four, I think, before Black Panther, which we're getting soon. And now it's like the final movie of the next phase of movies. It's like, what is this? Like, there, these are not, you don't have any plan. Because COVID really screwed up the production schedule and they had to salvage whatever they could. 
Um, of but course. Uh, on the Fantastic Four movies from the 2000s, I actually like. There's a lot of redeeming qualities in those. Like Chris Evans really? as the Human Torch, perfect casting. Yoan Grufford as Mister Fantastic, perfect casting. Um, Michael Michael Chiklis as the Thing as Ben Grimm, perfect casting. Jessica. Well, Chiklis is a great actor. Yeah, he's on. Uh, he's in uh, the Fantastic Four movies and the Shield, I think. Um. But, I'm just uh, saying he's just a great actor in general. But like, yeah, and and uh, I think they got Lawrence Fishburne to voice the Silver Surfer, and that's like, okay, yeah, that that's okay. I'm not saying they're good okay, movies. But, I'm saying there's a lot of like redeeming qualities in those movies. Oh, okay, the, but the only redeeming qualities you've pointed out is that oh, they picked the right people. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make for a good movie. <laughs> no. I I don't think they are that good movies. So it's so there's no confirmed cast for the new one. No. Uh, Even they, though so when is that supposed to be coming out? Like four, three, four years from now. It was supposed oh, to be coming out this year or like last year before COVID, but everything got shuffled around. Wow. Uh, I, the rumor is that Anthony Starr is being sur- is being orbited to play uh, Doctor Doom, and I think that's a terrible idea. I can't believe that. Them remaking Fantastic Four, and it's just going to be Doctor Doom again. Is there like nothing left? Do they've never have done no ideas. Okay, here's the thing. Like how they've never done Lex Luthor in the movies, they've never done Doctor Doom. They have done this buffoonish charade of a character who calls himself Doctor Doom, who calls himself Lex Luthor, but they've never like done the actual character. So I'm I'm. This is like probably the only. This is the last one, I think. I, I'm interested in seeing if they can do a good Doctor Doom story. Other than that, I'm completely uh, tuned out of the MCU at this point. Me too. I don't know in which phase we're in. I don't know. I phase four names yeah. keep popping up that apparently are shows and movies that are out or not out. I, yeah. I'm so done. It's really hey, funny. Sir, did you see? Uh, yeah. Did you see Fan Four Stick? No, I didn't see that one, but uh, apparently that's yeah. a, that was a pretty good movie that was butchered in uh, reshoots and editing because they hated the director, Josh Trank. Too. Yeah, I think the director was the same guy who did another movie called Chronicle, yeah. which was written by uh, Max Landis, that yeah. fucking uh, sex pest. Yeah, like father, like son. They're both terrible. Appar- yeah, apparently. John Landis, uh, appa- he murdered that, that those movie, people. That- yeah, but apparently that movie Chronicle was pretty good. Yeah, I I I don't blame him for Fan Four Stick, right? That's like that's an example of I talked about the Young Pope last episode, and I'm gonna talk about a bit about the Offer in a bit. That's like an example of like those two shows are an example of you bring a really capable manager into this ostr like into this stagnant system, and then he has to reactivate it. And like actually try to revive the system to be able to do the dynamic things it's supposed to do. With Josh Trank, that's like, okay, we take this hotshot new director who's like really good at making movies. He has a really good sort of creative vision and he works really well with actors. And we don't let him do anything. It's like, what do you, what do you, of course he's trashing hotel rooms. This guy's like wasting months of his life creating a movie that he has no joy for because you ruined it for him. I mean, it kind of reminds me of how uh, it, just in a company where they the the company will realize, okay, we have some sort of problem. We're going to hire someone to fix that problem. And that person will be like, yeah, well, you need to do this, this, and that to fix these problems. They're like, well, we don't do that. Yeah. Did you ever read the- And then uh, why'd you hire them? Did you ever read the Sony emails when they leaked? Because uh, a- Amy Pascal- no. Amy Pascal and the crew behind the Spider-Man movies, they were talking to Kevin Feige. Like, he was shown, like, scripts of the movie, and he was like, he liked Spider-Man 2, and he was like, okay, you need to not do this, you need to not do this, you need to not do this. Why do you have all of these stories acting together? He was, like, giving them a blueprint for what not to do, and they completely ignored him. Ah. And this is, yeah, and this is, this is why... Uh, I don't like David Sanansky or whatever his name is, the guy who's now in charge of Warner Brothers. He's he's just de- deleting all of these movies uh, that were that were scheduled to be made. Everybody on Twitter is so mad at him. I am so interested in seeing what he does with that company because for the first time 
it seems like somebody is actually making decisions there. Where before it was like, well, what, what movies are we making? We making a, we making a, we we doing a Black Adam movie? Uh, okay, is it in the same universe as the other one? Um, I don't know. Is it like it? It was just like there was nobody in charge of anything. And this is like perfectly embodied with Henry Cavill's mustache in the Justice League reshoots, where it's like, <laughs> you, if you actually have somebody in charge of this project, he sits Cavill down, he personally shaves his mustache, and then he sends the mustache in an envelope to the people at Paramount, and they say, and like with a letter that says, "Sue us." Actually, like you, you threatened legal action if we did this. Let's see you follow through. Like, let's see you actually be that petty. Um. And if he had done that, I don't think anything would have come of it. But nobody was in charge. So yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm bullish on Warner Brothers. I really am excited to see what he does with that. Um, yeah. yeah. Fuck Warner Brothers. No, no, I'm I'm super interested because it's finally like again, it's it's like Steve Jobs coming to Apple, where he's like, you know how we make five hundred different projects? Well, we're just gonna not do that. We're gonna make four products. We're gonna make the Mac. We're going to make this other version of the Mac. And then we're going to make, I think there was like, it may have just been four versions of the Mac. It was just like, these are the only products that make money. So these are the only products we're going to make. And then it was like, let's do the iPod. And then it was like, let's do the iPhone. And it's just it's like these organizations are always more interesting when somebody is in charge of them. No, because then you have like a strong vision, right? Like yeah. if you just have a bunch of people that have their own idea of how something is going to be. And then, you know, nothing comes together because they're just like going off doing their own little thing and, it, and, and nothing can, uh, you're, you're not going to have anything cohesive out of that. Yeah. You might have a lot of interesting parts that, that may work on their own, but that, you, you know, that's not a team working together. Yeah. There's a reason, like, if you look at NASA, back when like uh, Werner von Braun was in charge of NASA versus NASA now, it's like back in the day, you had a guy in charge of this organization. And he put a man on the moon. Today, like nobody's in charge of this. These people need to back Congress for more money. Like nobody's in charge of this organization. And so all of the like Deep Blue and the SpaceX, they're doing way more interesting stuff because they they're not saddled with this bureaucratic mindset. This is so apt because we're talking about the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, and he's like a great example of this too. Where um, he he was like the executive producer on Man of Steel. Do you guys know about John Peters? No. John Peters is the producer who owns the right to Superman. If you want to make a super, super, like he owns the cinematic rights to Superman. If you're going to do a Superman movie, you need to go through him. And he's crazy. He started his career as Barbara Streisand's hairdresser. And he, uh, from there, oh, he somehow acquired wait. the cinematic rights to Superman. Okay, no, I do know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's him. It's the crazy guy who's like, Kevin Kevin Smith in the 90s, write a Superman movie. Also, Superman needs to punch a polar bear and fight a giant spider. Like, yes, yeah. yes, I know about that story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, when they were filming Man of Steel, John Peters came on set once, and he had his ideas, and he was like, this is how it should be. The next day, John Peters tried to get back on onto the set. He was escorted out because Christopher Nolan said, this man doesn't come close, like, this man must be kept away from the set at all times. And it's just like, <laughs> yes, yes, somebody who actually has the power to, to say no. Love to see it, even though Man of Steel wasn't that good. But it would have been worse if well, John Peters had been involved. Nolan, not that Christopher good, Nolan didn't do so. Man of Steel. That was Zack Snyder. No, he, yeah. he executive produced it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. Well, Man of Steel wasn't that good, but whatever. Maybe they should have brought in the guy. <laughs> Man of Steel could have made a more interesting movie in any way of shape and form. <laughs> that is like the worst movie, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's nothing. Just so, is it, no, it's, it, it's it's worth worse than nothing. It's offensive. I think either that or um, Spider Man Three must be my top one most hated blockbuster movie I've ever seen. You hate that more than like the Independence Day movies. Yeah, the Independence Day movies at least has fun blow ups. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's like maybe Will Godzilla. Smith and, Godzilla's uh, really, Jeff really Goldblum. Bad. They're pretty charismatic. Yeah. 
Anyways. And Godzilla has a lot of bullshit CGI that looks terrible. So yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we are. Is fine. Do we want to get off this? Uh, whatever this detour is. Yeah, I asked you for the surprise. Oh, yeah, you what's don't want surprise? You want the surprise first? No. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Uh, how did? Well, how did you want to reveal the surprise? Did you want to leave it for the very end? Yeah, I think we should do the surprise right before we talk about uh, talk about the Dark Knight. Keep people on their toes. Okay. I mean, okay. I was kind of enjoying the tangent, but you know, if you want to talk about the offer so much, Acer, go ahead. The offer kind of connects to... Have you guys seen the offer? The series? No. no. Do you know what it is? Nope. No. It is a making of... Like, this is the story of how they made the first Godfather movie. It talks about, like, because the Godfather movie, the the mafia was involved in that. Oh. And, yeah, like, there's all this, like, political chaos surrounding it. Frank Sinatra was, like, <clears throat> trying to get it banned, and they needed to ally with the Italian-American League. And it's just, like, this insane story. And, again, this talks about what we're saying, where, like, committees are not the way forwards. What happened was this one guy who created Hogan's Heroes, he... he he pitched this like he he got the rights to this movie, and he was like, okay, you, yeah, yeah, you you produce this movie, whatever. And then his job basically was to get the director and the writer everything they wanted, and to to make the best movie he possibly could. And to that end, like I said, he has to hang out with mobsters. He has to like befriend these pe- <laughs> these people. Is it like, <laughs> oh my god, what's what is this? And it all happened. I don't know. How many episodes is it? It's like 10 episodes? Jesus. This sounds really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to watch this. Yeah, I I don't actually want (laughs) to talk too much about this because it's very hard to discuss it without spoiling it and spoiling what makes it so good. Um, It stars Miles Teller. This is the best thing he's ever done. This is his best performance by far. Um, And... Okay, I have a confession. Wait, so it's not make. a documentary? I've never, I've never seen The Godfather. Oh my god, you've never seen The Godfather? You don't have to have seen The Godfather. Like you know The Godfather I, from like just because you live in the yeah, world, I, right? Sure, I, I, I know all about The Godfather through like cultural osmosis, but yeah. like I still feel like I should probably watch the movie before watching this. I, yeah, know? I think you'll get more out of it if you have seen it because there's a lot of like. This show is not just about The Godfather. It is very informed by how they made The Godfather, stylistically and casting choices and things of that nature. Okay. I mean, you should All watch right, it I'm anyway. Gonna... It's, you know... Yeah, it's... That's uh... just a, the cultural thing that everyone probably should have seen. Yeah, it's, I've, I've it's watched one of those it things and I, that everyone has to. I don't remember much about it, you know? It's just it's a fine movie. I think I... You, needed to be, you needed to be there to really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I, mean, I think so I think too. I'll appreciate. I think I'll appreciate it as a you know just because I, I'm such a fan of The Sopranos, like, oh yeah, because of the Sopran because the Sopranos was heavily inspired by The Godfather as well. Didn't they pill for a bunch of actors from The Godfather? They sure fucking did. Yeah, Christopher Moltisanti. Um, no way, he was from Goodfellas. My bad. Uh. But no, yeah, there there are actors from uh, The Godfather in The Sopranos. Yeah, there's also a lot of mobsters uh, in The Godfather, just like actors. I think I think that was also the case in Goodfellas. Oh, nice, nice. More of that, please. Yeah, more of that, please. It's also um, Matthew Good, our friend from Watchmen. He's in this movie. He is. He's in this show. I should say he is so good in it. He's playing like this crazy sexed up uh, 60s hollywood producer and he is so good <laughs> good in it uh i don't i don't understand what is this it's not a documentary it's, no it's it's is just it like, telling an actual story yeah it's of, just, like is, it's is just it a movie of the, the behind of, the scenes hmm? is it like a portrayal of the behind the scenes shooting of the godfather yeah yeah, and like the uh, the production meetings and all of that. Okay. It's yeah. It's... Yeah, it looks to me like it's kind of like shot like a high end like HBO show or something. Yeah. But like, 
it's the story of how The Godfather was made. It's like a dramatization. It feels to me, because it's made by Paramount, I think, which owns The Godfather. <clears throat> it seems to me that they were like, because they were creating their own streaming service, and they were like, we need to create some content. What properties do we own? Uh, the Godfather. How can we monetize The Godfather? Um, how about, well, you know, the producer of The Godfather wrote this book about the crazy making of the movie. Uh, do we make that a streaming show? And they were like, uh, sure, get somebody who knows how to make a show and make him do it. And uh, they did, and it was really good. I think this is one of those topics, unfortunately, listeners. You may, yeah, you make it sound like they just bullshitted their way <laughs> into it. <laughs> I have They're so like, little what, faith. What, in what these. do we do? <laughs> uh, what's going on? Where am I? I don't know. I don't know. I just walked into the office one day, and now we're making a show. I'm the CEO. Oh no, no. But I think this is one of those topics that we should probably return to when more than one person has seen it, because. It's um, yeah. there's a lot to dig into with this one. Okay. Yeah. I did it. Last episode, I said I was gonna talk about the offer, and I did it. Cool. You did what you set out to do. I did. I hope you're proud of yourself. Spoken. Yes. Yeah. What have you been up to? Uh, I. I watched a playthrough of The Quarry. You watched it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you could, you couldn't even be bothered to play the fucking game yourself. Well, then, I'd, you were like, well, then I'd have to buy it. And it's shit. Like, I'll watch wow. a shit game uh, on a Let's Play. I will not buy a shit game. I think Pokemon yeah, is absolutely sure. also, right. This this game yeah, isn't even worth to, playing. Like, sure. There's barely any gameplay. Okay, to be fair, yeah, I do that too, so I can't really talk to <laughs> Why were I you, see... like, dunking on him? Come on. <laughs> well, okay. That's just his instinct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't help it. My 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 prerogative is to bully Boken. No, uh, I see. I would never do that. Also, I don't, I don't say it has no gameplay as, like, a... Um, you know, as an, as an insult to a game, because... I don't think every game needs heavy gameplay, but this one is just bad. It's like bad in everything. I mean, I've heard people say that they liked it, so it's interesting that you're like, fuck this game. I don't know what there is to like about this. Like, it's just, it, it's from the people who made uh, Until Dawn. Oh, and I think God. They also made, what is it, Man of Medan or something? I've never seen a play. Man of Madan. Oh, Men of Medan. Um, I've, I've only seen very little of Until Dawn, and my my immediate takeaway from it was, wow, this looks really good. Wow, this dialogue is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> like the characters are just the worst. Actually, the <laughs> just worst. Just awful. It is, that, that is like the first thing that just, when you start the game and you, like just the people start talking, and it's just every single fucking line is like a quip or someone attacking someone else for no reason. Like every single fight. These I don't know how these people are friends or just <laughs> can stand being in the same ra- room with each other because they just give each other shit every second of the day. Like this is not how normal people talk. And it's like, okay, yeah, you can you can do a little bit of a rivalry between characters, but these people just shit on each other. Every, with every t- every time they open their mouth it's so like it's just obnoxious and i don't understand how you write like how you try to write characters this way you're not en- going to end up liking any one of them because they're all smart asses and really abrasive well you know? you know what really bothers me is that i feel like the horror genre has so much potential for like some really fantastic writing and yet the horror genre is also synonymous with like the worst fucking z grade trash (laughs) that's true (laughs) yeah yeah like like and you you can you can make horror (laughs) horror stuff where it's not about the characters the characters are just uh, like vehicles to get killed basically and you need a good horror movie but what i'm saying is like horror movies uh are like prime for putting characters in like these extremely like vulnerable situations where like some real 
genuine human emotions can come out. And like, I'm not saying it's, 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 it's never done correctly. Obviously there are, you know, the rare instances where, you know, yeah, they, 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 there, there's some good shit, but like, it's just that so much of it is just schlock. Yeah. I think, uh, whenever I think of like quality horror games today, I always go back to, um, anatomy silent hill <laughs> no i always go back to anatomy uh that that's a more recent game it's an, like an, isn't anatomy. it like seven years old now an, anatomy anatomy uh, you're yeah you're talking about the game where it looks like a ps1 title and yeah, you that, enter this you're you're in this house and the you you're listening to these like um audio recordings of this like this i don't know is this, this like entity. a psychiatrist Someone is like uh, comparing the house as if to if it's as if it was like a human body, and yeah. then like as you play through the game, the house becomes more warped, and it's just this palpable yeah. atmosphere of dread and tension. And uh, even though like there are no enemies in the game, nothing uh, is going to attack you. I was gonna, sk- I was gonna, second... I was gonna skirt around that. I was gonna not spoil that, but whatever. Yeah, that's but, a big uh, yeah, spoiler. I, Sorry. I think it'll hit regardless. It's uh it's if people want to play that, it's Kitty Horror Show Anatomy. Uh yeah. Yeah, like I, I feel like it even me saying that doesn't matter. You're still gonna be on pins and needles if you play it because the atmosphere is that fucking effective. I feel like, like it just, does matter. You like nothing needs to attack you, but you need to think something is going to attack you. Sure. But you ruined the Again, game, Daniel, these, for everyone. I don't think I, I don't think I did because I still feel like, even if logically you know, like okay, nothing's gonna attack me. The atmosphere is just that fucking good that you'll still be like. Eh. Anyways, uh, yeah, there's a lot of crappy and, horror stuff. Yeah, there's also a lot of good horror stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Some would say Snail was a pretty effective horror game, but fuck mm. if you two would know. <laughs> <laughs> um it's not a horror game per se but like a, a friend of mine was playing omori recently nice nice I just play... nice nice segue into another game <laughs> <laughs> well i want to play it myself at some point i played i played like the intro of it what did you say I, it was called like, omori omori and omori. o-m-o-r-i and a friend of mine was like this is a <laughs> my friend got a little farther than me and she was like this is a cute rpg but it's it's actually hiding a horror game underneath, and I was like, oh. Ooh. Then again, she's like she's like a huge scaredy cat, so she's probably just like playing up. Like what what she finds scary, you and I will probably be like whatever. But still, though, like the fact that that on the the surface it's it's like this very like cutesy looking game. Um, the fact that there is like darker stuff, that that's pretty cool. All right. All right. Hey, you know what? I just went to a movie theater and watched a horror movie. What? I hope you guys are proud of myself. Horror movie be? Uh, It was Nope. Oh, yeah. Which then turned out really isn't that much of a horror movie. But, uh, you know, I had to think about it. Eh, Not really. But, you know, I would. I don't like it. I don't watch horror movies in movie theaters because I can't turn down the sound when the jump scare is going to happen. Oh. So I had to really sit through that, and I did. This fucking guy. It's spooky. Wait. Was it good, though? No, it wasn't. It was good for <laughs> two It was good for two acts, and then it fell apart. Okay. I feel like, like with Jordan Peele, people, like, really want him to be a really good filmmaker. Um, but he's, like, he's good... But he's not great, and people really want him to be great, you know? Yeah. I mean, there was that one infamous tweet where this guy was like, oh, he's oh, like yeah. the greatest. <laughs> and and even Jordan Peele came, like, responding. He was like, dude, you're talking shit about the thing. Get out of here. John yeah. Carpenter's <laughs> yeah. the goat. Fuck out of here. Yeah. And, it's, you know, he's fine. Like, I watched Get Out before that, and that's a good movie. Um, but it also was a bit clunky. And like a bit confused. Yeah, but like, like I, I, like I appreciate him. a good filmmaker who keeps coming up with new ideas. Yeah, and that's, has that's a, what I like has about re- him. A really good vision. Yeah. He's not gonna make nope five, you know? 
I'm excited to sound like he's universe, going. Phase one. This is gonna sound very condescending, but he gets an A for effort. No, <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I haven't seen any of his movies. What I mean, I, what, what I mean is like at the very least, like he has, he has, he's trying to introduce like fresh ideas. Is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. and the, yeah, that but that needs to be highlighted. You know, it's just like like Nolan. His movies aren't great, but hey, at Nolan's least you're creating something great, new. Man. What are you talking about? Did you see Tenet? Well, we'll we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Did you not like it. Tenet? I love Tenet. I, I have not seen Tenet. Tenet is I amazing. Ten I don't believe you. It is amazing. It is way like better than Bojack Horseman. People have completely forgotten <laughs> why, about Tenet. Why a Bojack? You always bring up Bojack. <laughs> is it because Boken made a video on it? <laughs> I think I started. I did it once with Rick and Morty because I I liked Rick and Morty better, and ever since I've just stuck. I'm like Jordan okay. Peele. I'm I'm like the opposite of Jordan Peele, where I don't have any new ideas. I just take the old ones, and I like it's old wine in new bottles, baby. <laughs> oh. uh, you haven't even seen like the really good shit in BoJack. You I saw hack. like three episodes or something. I saw like four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Out of like six seasons, yeah. Like I saw yeah, four seasons. All of them. Is, yeah, four seasons is a lot. I didn't hate it. It's like just like it. it's it's really good. It's just like this is not my forte. Is the thing. But yeah. somehow you stuck around for four seasons. Yeah, because it was good. Okay. Anyway, the quarry. The other thing to talk about. Uh, because this is the Until Dawn shit where every character can constantly die and the game needs to be, you know, the narrative needs to mold around that. Um, you don't, you guys don't know these games, I guess, then? No. No. Uh, okay. Well, it's basically like you're playing a slasher horror movie and you keep controlling different characters and they get into whatever action scenes or chase scenes and then they can possibly die. And uh, so the narrative can, you know, follow just paths where some characters die and some characters don't. And uh. they're very proud of that. It's, you know, one of those choose your own adventure style games. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I watched a playthrough. Um, most characters in that playthrough survived. And then I watched all death scenes that are possible. Because I wanted to to see where all the characters can die, and how the movie would even, or like the game would even function then. Mm. And I found it kind of interesting because when I looked at it, like where characters can die, it's like there's a main story that actually involves um, the monsters and like people trying to solve the monster problem, and that involves like three characters roughly, and then you have five or six other characters who come in and out of the main plot supposedly they're main characters but they can really only die in scenes with these other five characters and it's uh. like the, the the three main characters who are relevant to the story to actually get to the ending those characters can never die there there's one point where they can die all three of them but it's like all three of these characters are in the same room and can kill each other in different ways. So at least one of those characters is, is going to survive that scene and then there's no point where they can die again until they get to the ending, you know? So it's like you have three main characters and five filler characters and the filler characters can die at any point and, you know, kill each other, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the game is good at hiding that, but it seemed fairly obvious to me afterwards. How much that, um, replay value do these games have? Well, zero, because nothing of relevance is going to happen to characters that matter. Uh, the, the, the characters who can die in many ways are the characters who are complete filler because they need to be written in and out of the story. It's uh, the, you, you won't notice that shit on the first playthrough, but no? I guess this is like the only way where you can even make something like this happen. You know, 
Because, yeah, it is a lot of work to just create these infinite scenes of characters who may or may not be in these plot points and to, to make that happen. And I think a lot of people also complain that, you know, even then there's in, inconsistencies in, in a couple of scenes where suddenly characters are there and then they're gone and then they appear <coughs> again. And it's like, you know, oh, they, they try to connect things here, but based on whether these characters are still alive or not, this will happen or not. You know, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's interesting to think about, but I don't think I'm not sure if games like this are really worth existing, to be honest. No, I mean, I, I, I have not been impressed with a game like this since I played Fahrenheit uh, 911. Like the, or, uh, the fucking David Cage game. Yeah, I played that on the PlayStation 2 when I was a little kid and I was like, whoa, this is so interesting. And that was the last time I was impressed by that tech. Have you gone back to it? Because that game is fucking terrible. That oh, I know it's I know it's terrible. Worst. But when I was like nine years old or whatever, I saw that and I was like, "What a what a cool idea!" And I'm saying that's the last time I was impressed by that. Yeah, I, f- I feel like people play the first scene of that game and they're impressed by how many things can happen and how many choices you have. And then, yeah. you know, I, I don't think much of it comes back even. It's just, it, it feels too hard to really follow through on all your choices that you're giving a player. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it it's very difficult. Because you have to, uh, you have to account for like multiple different possibilities. And then you have to create scenarios around those different possibilities. Like it's, it's so much work. And then you have to create to write so many lines, or the you know, you have to voice over these lines, and the, the game needs to know when to play characters into a scene. And I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, don't I like mean, it. a lot a lot of people bitch about like, oh, games should do that more often. And it's like, yeah, it's really easy to say that, but <laughs> like the fact of the matter is, actually going through with that is fucking difficult. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of effort, and I'm not sure the reward is worth it. I think that yeah, because it's not like these games sell gangbusters. I think the trick with this stuff is that like the more human and like realistic you try to make it, the worse it's gonna be. But if you imagine like if you imagine this sort of game where you like the every character is like a blue gnome and there's no voice, there's no lines, nobody has any voice lines, and it's all procedural where the story just keeps advancing with like the AIs of the characters in it recognizing the situations they're in, like. Like an, like kind of like an immersive sim, but for storytelling, you know. Like if you do that, then you can procedurally generate one of those sorts of games. Um, but you'd you'd have to rely on the player to infer so much knowledge because you're not using dialogue. The moment text comes into this, it always becomes such a nightmare. I don't know. Did you guys ever read uh, Chris Crawford's interactive storytelling book? No. Uh, he no. he basically talks about the problem with uh, interactive storytelling in this format for like 200 pages. And the solutions that he's bringing up is like, you have to have a story edit. Like the game needs to be not um, a camera. The game needs to be the director. And it, it's not mm. enough that the game has these pre-scripted ways for the story to go. The player must be free to do what they want. And it's the role of the game to look at what they do and then write a story based on that. Uh, I'm 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 simplifying this a lot, but it's it's a really interesting book if you want to explore this topic further. Well, that's basically what um, you know Dungeons and Dragons game masters do. Yeah, yeah, basically. He comes from that school of uh, game design. He created. Did you ever play Excalibur? I think it's like an Atari game. It's really good. Mm, no, Excalibur. Yeah. On like what an Atari twenty six hundred. It's something like that. Or Atari 5200, maybe. Um, and the idea is just like you're trying to get Arthur back to Camelot on the throne before Mordred takes over. Here's the timer you have to do this on. Get working. And you have like, you know, there's a story that happens with that. I always think that's so much more interesting, like Majora's Mask, where the storytelling, it's all interactive. It's like, why, why are you doing the things you're doing? Look at the Look at the fucking sky, man. That's why you're doing the things that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Majora's, man, Majora's Mac is, is so fucking good. It's kind of a bummer that 
Ayanuma looks back on Majora and he's like, he's he's kind of ashamed of it. And it's like, nah, dude, you made something fucking awesome. That's the best thing you ever did, motherfucker. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I th- he I, he sees it differently, I guess, because like I think he was a little depressed or something when he made that game, which is why it ended up the way it did. And I, I guess looking at, at it from, like, the point of view of it being a Nintendo game, yeah. he was like, oh, I shouldn't have made it like this. And it's like, no, dude. Fucking Majora's Mask is, like, one of the best Zelda games. Yeah, it's really interesting that Ocarina of Time became, like, this big model for AAA games going forward. Majora's Mask, on the other hand, became, on the other hand, became the model for, like, indie games going forward. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. And I'm you not know wrong. all the cool kids prefer Majora. Yeah. My arch nemesis, King K, uh, which is an inside joke. He doesn't know. <laughs> I think he prefers Twilight Princess, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Someone prefers Twilight Princess. How dare they, frankly? Prefer that is actually over... not a good take. What, pre- prefer Twilight over what, Ocarina or Majora? Just pr- both don't. of them. Ocarina and Majora are both better than Twilight. They, I mean, I agree. Ocarina and Majora are both better than Twilight. I'm saying, what was his take? That he preferred Ocarina or Majora? No, that he preferred Twilight. It doesn't matter. No, Twilight over which one? Both of them. It, oh, both of them. I, it may not have been oh. him. Somebody preferred uh, Twilight over the rest of them. I... I I mean, I don't know. I feel like Twilight, this is probably a reductive way to say it, but like, I feel like Twilight was just Ocarina again, but edgier. Yeah, because people got mad at Wind Waker. Yeah, so they tried, they they like overcorrected and they ended up making something that wasn't like, well, not a bad game, but like not nearly that interesting. It all goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning, like, these games work when you have a guy in charge who sets sail and then makes the thing he wants to make. And then when you have like the executives over at Nintendo, like, no, but they got mad because of Wind Waker. You have to do good. You have to do the thing they want. Apparently, apparently it's recently come out that like fucking Miyamoto hated uh, how Wind Waker looked. <laughs> Oh, which he is would. Super, which is so which is so fucking ironic because years later Wind Waker it holds up so much better than fucking Twilight at least in terms of visuals. Like, oh yeah, it probably holds Dude, up better regardless. But like Wind especially Waker, in terms of visuals, Wind Waker like, holds Twilight up. Princess, yeah, what? no, go ahead. No, I was just saying like especially in terms of visuals, Wind Waker looks way fucking better than Twilight. Twilight yeah. has aged like it's not a. It's not terrible. It's one game, of those but like compared to Win- Wind Waker looks so fucking good. Looks yeah. so fucking crisp and beautiful. Wind it's Waker really is one of the most timeless games. It's really ever. weird with Twilight Princess that like how Link he has such dead eyes in that game. Because Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really weird because you look at like Jack and Daxter came out in two thousand. And like they have they're way more animated and way more lively. So it's not it's not just the visual style. There's just a clear lack of animation quality that was going on in Nintendo at the time. I mean, to be fair, a Jack and Daxter has kind of like a Saturday morning cartoon ish vibe to it, which lends itself more to like the over exaggerated. No, how about like Jack Two or Jack Three? Those those don't have that uh, zippy quality to them. Like I mean, I, I, I mean I'm, a not bit, a, I'm not as familiar. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying like. There's clearly like an, it's a layer of polish to the Jack games over like a Twilight Princess. That it's just it's baffling that Nintendo took so long to get animation. No, yeah, I mean I'm not trying to defend the animation of Twilight. That the I I distinctly remember there was like a scene in Twilight that was highlighted by uh, Matthew Matosis. Because he was complaining about the same shit about the dead eyes, and he was like, "Look at this fucking cutscene where like Link walks into a store, and he try and it, it, they try to make it seem like Link was like amazed about of like the stuff that was in the store, but it's just like his fucking dead face, just like with a <laughs> smile on it, looking around the room, and it looked fucking terrible." <laughs> uh. 
Oh my god, Bogan, I just noticed you have Final Fantasy fourteen on the dock. Hell yeah, baby, let's go. Yeah. No, you wait a minute. Final Fantasy patch. Let's do it. Wait a minute. Daniel, Daniel, Final Fantasy. That means Daniel doesn't get any of his topics. Uh, no. That means uh, I am giving the... Uh, what the fuck is it called? The scepter to Daniel? My, and we can talk about Final my, Fantasy first. Why? My topics are really not even that long. Like, the the, ge- <laughs> the games I played are super short, so shut up. Fine. So, Daniel, so are you liking the new patch? Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Uh, I I did. Um, f- I think there's like they released like four circles of abyssos. I did three of them. I still need to do the last one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw that on Twitter that you were posting about. Um, what did did they already release like the extreme version of Barishi or Barbariccio? Yeah, Bar- they did. Okay, and uh, the savage version of the raid is coming next week. Oh shit! I I can't. I haven't done Savage yet. Well, you should do EX first because EX is easier than Savage. Right, 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 right. It's really fun. So got a good raid uh, boss fight. Yeah. How do you feel about the story? Uh, the way that the story is going so far in the MSQ. Uh, I like it. It's I don't know. I I figured these are old designs. You told me before we started that the, these are a lot of Final Fantasy IV characters. Yeah, and they so did look the really like this, cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the really cool thing about this patch. It, it's been basically just a huge love letter to Final Fantasy IV in particular. Not in terms of the story so much, like, um, like the the events, like the the way that the story is coming out is totally original. But like the boss fights, the music some of the dialogue of the boss fights, all of it is like Final Fantasy IV. It's fucking great. Dude, like some of the remastered, not remastered, remixed versions of these songs are so fucking good. Like, like I remember playing uh, Final Fantasy IV on like the original hardware uh, back in like middle school. And those songs still slap back then. And hearing these versions of the song, like reorchestra or whatever, it's like nostalgia right in my fucking veins. So fucking good. Yeah. I also, the soundtrack and the raid is pretty fucking good. Especially the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the second and the third fight, where you have like the, the woman singing the theme from the first fight. It's uh, mm, yeah. fucking good. I'm looking forward to hearing that for yeah. 100 hours while I'm trying to clear it. Uh, the last one I did was the the fucking woman that was fused to the tree, and yeah. some of her like AOE attacks were like literally her like using the trunks to like slam the arena to create shockwaves. And Dude, that fucking that fight that that fight was pretty tough. Yeah, because they also changed the arena. It's not a you know just a, a circle anymore that you're standing on, but there's like three platforms. Yeah, and that doesn't happen able... often. I'm I'm curious what they will do with that mechanically. Yeah, I remember that was always one point of contention for you, and you were saying like this was something that WoW did better, where the arenas were a lot more dynamic and interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I I I, th- I think I agree with you. Like, it's not something that's ever bothered me too too much. But then I saw some footage of of World of Warcraft, and I was like, oh wow, that those arenas do seem more interesting and. It it is kind of silly how like we're all just like fighting on these like floating fucking pa- platforms that are like perfectly situated to uh to attack these bosses. Yeah, I mean it's hidden it's hidden miss in World of Warcraft too. Uh there's like a section for example in the Sylvanas fight where it's like you start out on on a platform and then the second phase is you running up giant chains that have been, you know, thrown towards the world basically and you just run on these chains while mobs keep spawning and attacking you and that is oh, that sounds cool it it is cool it looks cool but the phase itself goes on for so fucking long that is really just annoying uh but you know yeah they they try at least yeah i, I think the unfortunate thing about ff uh, ff14 I, th- I think this is going to be something that's going to affect it for at least a few more years is that it's still kind of hamstrung by the PS4. I mean, I 
I, I don't know when will be the day where they can say like, okay, PS4 is no longer supported. Uh, and then like the, the PS5 becomes the, uh, the console platform of choice. But like, I feel like when that day comes, whatever like expansion is associated with it, we're going to see like a huge fucking jump. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, World of Warcraft is literally what? 20 years old almost mm -hmm. 15 years old and they're also checkout by a lot of uh, technical issues but not that one but like it because originally ff14 also supported the ps3 and when they stopped supporting the ps3 um that i think that was uh that was stormblood and if you look at the difference between like some of the zones in like heaven's ward compared to stormblood yeah like you could see a big difference yeah it looks way better yeah that's part that's partly what i'm saying we're like the the moment that the ps4 that the support for it is dropped i think we are going to see a pretty significant change but unfortunately i don't see that happening for at least a while because the ps the ps4 like probably brings them too much money i mean yeah does it, I think the game looks sucks. fine. Through the game, like just the the glamour system is so much better than World of Warcraft ever could. Like the the clothing you have in Final Fantasy, there's so much detail, and they can do so much with that. And then you look at World of Warcraft, and it's literally literally just a a texture slapped onto your character, and nothing more. Yeah, it is fucking. Terrible. I think it was was it this patch that they increased the the glamour chest. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, because I've been hitting the cap with the, the glamour chest for a while now. So <laughs> I'm constantly having to like take things out and dis discard them or whatever. So I'll have to go back and check. But yeah, the, the story is good. I mean, you know, the, the void world uh, that we haven't really seen before that much. I think they, they, yeah, the they're 13th. doing a good world. Uh, good, they're doing good work trying to flesh that out into its own universe. And explaining the rules and how the characters in there are motivated. The the way that this place, the 13th, the way it looks is how I, f like the vibe of it is what I was expecting from Shadowbringers. So I'm, 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 because like Shadowbringers, I really like the vibe of Shadowbringers, don't get me wrong. Um, but like this was more what I was expecting. So I am glad that they're 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 leaning a little more into this like kind of slightly like edgier, kind of darker sort of um sort of tone. Yeah. Yeah. And I really this... like the new character introduced. Yeah. She's uh she's she's kinda edgy, but also not. Like she has virtually I mean... no emotion, but she doesn't feel childishly edgy. So no, I she just feels like she's a product of the world that she she lived in. It doesn't it doesn't feel over the top. It's just it's kind of I think it's like more edgy in concept than execution. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm uh, yeah, I I still have a couple of quests left to finish to wrap up the MSQ and then I have to go back to Abyssos. Um did you unlock the island sanctuary yet? Nope. Are you going to bother with it? Yeah, at some point. But so far, I've only done the extreme. And I'm, you know, I got the weapon. And I'm going to try to, to get some, some good damage locks. Bro, I want to unlock that armor. The, with the fucking flame shoulders and shit. I need that. Yeah, I need that in would. my life. I need it. It looks so fucking good. But can't you get that? Isn't that, or is that only the savage version? Uh, No, you can get it. But, like, I think the, the tokens for it, like... You can only get like one token a week or some shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, per. Don't you, don't you, you can remember get one token you... per boss, and if one you want, token if per you want boss the chest piece, week. you want you need all four of the four bosses. Right. I didn't realize that when I first greeted, so I was like, <laughs> I got like a headpiece, and I was like, and they were like, oh, you can't, you can't get the other ones. I was like, fuck. <laughs> you fucked up. I did fuck. I'm gonna have to wait for next week. 
Okay, well, that's Final Fantasy for now. That's Final Fantasy. You you can come out of your hole, Acer. We're done. I fucking hate this game so much. Hate having to talk about this <laughs> right, goddamn so game good. so much. One one day you're gonna play it, and then you're you're gonna you're gonna love it just like we do. Honestly, uh, when you said you had a surprise for us, I my first thought was you started Final Fantasy. Oh <laughs> no 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 no. <sighs> Oh, man. I can't play those games because I ha I'm such an addict, man. You know, if I start playing that sort of stuff, you just won't hear from me for a week, for a month. Sounds good. Fuck you. Oh, that was, that was me. <laughs> that was unnecessary. What have I done? <laughs> uh, you, so, you know, you make the setup like that. How can I not dunk? This, this is the so, new Dark Boken. Uh, in instead of uh, the stormtrooper, should have been uh, you should have changed it to like a Sith Lord. <laughs> mm, should have been yeah. like Shadow the Hedgehog wearing those Dark Kingdom Hearts robes. <laughs> I, I I saw this fucking great image of Shadow the Hedgehog and these guys arms swollen. He's like, "No, mom, I'm 13. I eat unhappy meals now." <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm assuming you two, you guys know who Dave Grohl is. Yeah, we did. We banned him from this from this uh, podcast, so you can't actually talk about that. Whoa, we did. No, we didn't. He's talking shit. Uh, what do you have against Dave Grohl? It's just been an hour, man. We're an hour in. And fine, whatever. Dave Grohl. All right, you do you know who he is? Yeah, is he's it? the uh, Foo Fighters. Uh, Dave Grohl, uh, formerly the drummer of Scream, formerly the drummer of Nirvana, and uh, uh, formerly the drummer of uh, Queens of the Stone Age, and uh, current singer, guitar player, songwriter for Foo Fighters. Now, uh, he's had like a reputation as like just one of the nicest guys in the industry, and he came out with a book recently, and I was like, I'll check out his book. All right. Just because I'm not like a I'm not like a huge fan of Foo Fighters or anything like that, but I was like, eh, I'm I'm sure he's ha he's got some interesting stories, and he does. Um, and on top of that, he's just like a really pleasant guy. He him uh, if you listen to the audiobook, he himself reads the book, and he's he's just a super swell guy. He's it, what I really appreciate about the book is that it, he he really writes it from the perspective of like a guy that feels like he just kind of stumbled into all of this craziness. He's <laughs> it's not lost in him that he's like a pretty normal dude and yet like he's like rubbing elbows with like the Beatles. You know like <laughs> you, you know or like Elton John or like you know, all all these fucking uh superstars. And he still feels like he's like in his 50s now, but he says like he still feels like a young man that's just like still just just happy to be here he's still just like man this is fucking sick um and he just seems like a super nice guy he's uh there's some stories about him and his daughters that are like super wholesome so ba basically if you want like if you want a book that's wholesome pick it up if you want a book that uh has some cool stories about other rock stars pick it up obviously if you're a fan of foo fighters or nirvana or whatever and you want to learn more about the history of like you know his relationship with um kurt cobain and stuff you know pick it up but overall good stuff i i recommend it mm -hmm. storyteller okay dave Grohl. unfortunately i don't care about any of these bands <laughs> you don't even care about nirvana come on that's no that's like a cultural touchstone of like '90s music. Yeah, and they make boring ass rock. Hey, oh who, shut uh, up! You have which, nah, shut up. Which band do you guys like more, Nirvana or Guns N' Roses? Nirvana, not even close. Uh, how about you, Boken? Can I say neither? No. It's which oh, of these two do you prefer? Guns N' Roses, I guess. I also prefer Guns N' Roses. And you know what that uh, means, Daniel. 
That means Guns N' Roses is better. It's two against <laughs> no, one. That, no. It is literally two against one. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's actual like a, Rose like a guy alone. who doesn't listen to music and a guy who can name one <laughs> Guns N' Roses song have outvoted you. I'm sorry. Fucking Axel Rose alone makes me hate Guns N' Roses. Like, fucking hell. Axel Rose is, is a, a fucking, fucking power singer, man. Dude's an asshole. So? He's got like, I think fucking. he has like a six and a half octave vocal range. He's got like good for him. He's got like way people always talk about like oh Freddie Mercury had such a great voice. Axl Rose has the entire vocal range of Freddie Mercury and then some. Well, okay, yeah, that doesn't make good music. Well, it could, it can <laughs> make good music, but that's not a guarantee. It's a guarantee. I just think they're more interesting. I like, got Nirvana as like. <laughs> and then you have Guns N' Roses and it's like yeah right, no anyways do you guys know how fish is made no Spoken? uh no no okay so uh I don't know if I call him friend of the podcast per se, because I don't think any of us know him. But all around cool guy, uh, Jacob Geller, made a video uh, called Games About uh, Flesh and Other Gross Stuff or something like that. And in it, he talked about a game called How Fish is Made. This is a free game that you can go download right now on Steam. Um, It can be beaten in like half an hour. It's... Very short. Um, But watching the video made me want to try it out, and I did. And it was pretty interesting. It's got this sort of... It's got that, like, PS1, like, pixely type of aesthetic. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. And um, it's it's got kind of, like, an unsettling atmosphere to it. It's kind of like... I, I wouldn't say it's a horror game, per se, but it is... It is kind of, it's pretty dark, but also has a sense of humor. It's also a pretty funny game. Like, there's one part that that's, that perfectly encapsulates this, like, the, this gross comedy where, like, you find a fish that has a parasite that ate its tongue living inside of its mouth. Yeah. And it's that's the real thing, it's right? Talki- what I think isn't that the real thing in nature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. yeah, yeah. And it's talking to you about like how he and the fish were like such good friends, and and he was saying like, oh, he used to say like teamwork makes a dream work, that kind of thing, and it's like this motherfucker, <laughs> and then like right, and then afterwards. He it literally he goes into like a dance number and it's so weird. It's like the, the game completely shifts into this video where like the parasite puts on a top hat and it starts dancing and and it shows like this really gross imagery of like parasites and fish dying and stuff. And it's like it's fucking nasty and gross, but also like weirdly funny. I don't want to say much more because. Uh, like I said, it's a very short game, thirty minutes. They should make a game. That, they should make a game where you can do that, where you like meet a parasite, like a centipede or something, and you can have it eat your tongue and become your tongue. I'm gonna make that, would, that game. I mean, go for it. But yeah, uh, go check it out. It's free. It's like really short. How fish is made? So how how is fish made? I don't get it. You're just gonna have. To, you're just gonna have to play the game and find out. Bah. Bah. Um now the the last thing I want to talk about, I've been flirting with the idea of maybe making a video on this, possibly, just because it's super fascinating. Do you I, I sincerely doubt either of you have heard of this. Um, Do you have to ask, Daniel? Do you? Um <laughs> uh, 
I played these two visual novels called Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk. And the other one is Milk Outside of a Bag of Milk, the sequel. Hmm. So the games aren't actually about milk, if that's what you were wondering. Uh, they never the reason are. Why they have, the reason why they have such strange titles is because it's about the the games are about um this girl who go who goes unnamed. We don't know where her name is. The the fan base has taken to calling her Milk Chan. But she suffers from like pretty extreme social anxiety and she seems to be suffering from some sort of mental illness that she doesn't want to disclose. She 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 kind of says outright like she doesn't want to say what it is. Um but because of these issues, she has a tendency to, like, her mind has this tendency to get stuck in these, like, thought loops. So, like, in the first game, Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk, the, the whole point of the game is for her to just go and buy some milk. And then when she's at the stall to, like, to, to get milk, her mind is like, it's a milk inside of a bag of milk, inside of a bag of milk inside of a bag of milk and it, it keeps going like that and you as the player have to like snap her out of it and be like hey hey stop you need to buy it and you need to leave so the role of the player in these two games is actually super fascinating because you're not technically real you're actually just a voice in her head that she has manufactured in order to give herself the confidence that she needs in order to do something as fucking simple as going to the store and just buying some milk. Milk so doesn't come in is, bags, though, does it? In Canada, in Canada, they do. Fucking Canada, man. What do you mean a bag? Yeah. You don't mean like a plastic bag, surely. I mean, I don't live in Canada. But like the way that they do it in Canada is kind of weird, right? I'm bag like, of they... milk right now. These fucking Canadians and their artsy games and their crazy milk. I I mean, actually, the game is is made by a Russian. Oh. Well, look, look, look there in the chat. That that there you go. Those oh are my bags god, there's an extra bag of milk. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Why though? Why wouldn't you want it in a carton? The way that Canadians do it is they they all had their own pitchers at home, so they they pour the bag of milk in the pitcher because they just love milk that much that they have to have it in a pitcher. Yeah, but like this is objectively speaking worse for transporting because this ba these bags are not as sturdy. Uh, I mean, just what? Oh, I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad, people. What is this? Why did they do it like this? This is like a yeah, just a terrible, terrible idea. Hey, man! If you're Canadian and you listen to this podcast, have a look at your life, man. I would buy no liquid in a bag. In a bag. Ooh. I mean, I don't. I don't particularly like milk anyways, so I wouldn't buy bags of milk regardless. What about like, Bogan, what about like Gamer Girl bath water? Would you buy that in a bag? Mm, no. No. But you would buy it in a box, though. That's interesting. Like if I, okay, look, that's a niche product. Uh, <sighs> if I really wanted Gamer Girl bath water and it only came in a bag, I would probably buy it. But um, I would you prefer degenerate. any other container. <laughs> you degenerate. <laughs> I like how this conversation has devolved into this like obsession with bags of milk. I mean, it's weird. It is weird, but so are Canadians. That's true. Apparently, did you know that? Uh, so, yeah. Did you know that Scott Pilgrim was Canadian? Yes, he was super weird. He wasn't that weird. He was super weird. The Michael Sarah one was pretty weird. But that, that might just be because of Michael Sarah. <laughs> oh. 
I see that I'm the only one who's on board with this Michael Sarah hate, okay? Leave me out yeah. to dry. So, like I was saying before, before I was rudely interrupted on this tangent of ma- bags of milk. Ew. Bag of milk. Uh, so, to be clear, this these games are visual novels, and the decisions that you make are like the typical kind of like text prompts. But again, the, the way that they're contextualized in the game is that these are thoughts that are in this girl's head. So it when you look at it from that point of view, some of the, the choices are, are really sad, right? Because like there's two endings to the game. There's the ending where everything goes as it should, where you know you she she goes, she buys the milk, she goes home, that's the end of the game. Um, but there's another bad ending where if you if you pick all the 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 mean options, if you just are berate her and insult her, then the game just abruptly ends. And um, it's it's really sad to think about because like this is just her being hard on herself. Hmm. She, it, it, when the you look at it from that being point of that view, she killed herself. No, no, no. Not that she killed herself. It, more so that, like, sh- the the thoughts that she has were so negative, she couldn't even do something as simple as just going out to a store and buying some milk. Hmm. She just couldn't handle it. The ne- the Her negative thoughts were so, like, they, they were too much for her to handle. Yeah. Uh, the art style for the for this game is also pretty interesting. It only uses three colors. It's black, like pink, and like red, and that's it. That's and it's very crunchy, like pixels, and it I think it looks really sick. I think it looks really cool. It sounds too deep um, fried. It is kind of deep fried, yeah. <laughs> um now this first game, Inside a Bag of Milk, is a dollar literally one fucking dollar and can and the, it can be beaten in like 20 minutes oh, what? it's very 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 short um the sequel on the other hand milk outside of a bag of milk um i think it's ten dollars but that game is like to see all the content is like two hours two and a half hours something like that the production values as well is like substantially increased and it you i was a little concerned at first because uh i really liked how kind of crunchy and deep fried the first one looked but like the increase in production values all it does is just like amplify the art style and and make it even crazier and it's a lot of like the visuals are just like just really really well done um, and I'm trying, I'm dancing around it. I want to say too much about these games because I think they're really fascinating. And I really, I got a lot out of them. I really loved them because I just thought that they were super unique, super different. Um, and I, I, I strongly recommend them. Um, if, if you're into visual novels, especially ones that are like this fucking short, like you could beat both games comfortably in an afternoon if you wanted to. Um, I really strongly recommend them. They're very, they're, they're, they're kind of disturbing though. You're not going to see like tons of blood and guts or anything like that. They're more disturbing in that. Um, cause this is basically the tort you're, you're, you're stuck inside of the head, uh, of like a tortured little girl who li- who's living in a really bad home situation and, uh, because of her mental illnesses, her perception of reality is completely warped. Like she, uh, like the way that she sees her mom, for example, she doesn't even see her mom as like a normal person. She sees her mom as like an eldritch abomination wearing a doll mask. Like she can't even see her own mother as human anymore. And like it's 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 fucked. <laughs> Um, the sequel has more going on gameplay wise. It's more than just button prompts. Um, there's actually like five different endings and each of the endings are actually, uh, dreams that 
the uh, that their character has, and they and all the different dreams kind of clue you in more into uh, kind of what's wrong with her or what happened to her and why she ended up as kind of like traumatized as she is. So that's all I'm going to say. Give it a shot. Um, I think they're both. I, I think especially if you want something different. If you want something that's, you know, not your typical visual novel, not your typical type of game, um, they're both highly recommended. And they're both, like, super short and cheap. Like, the first game's literally a dollar, at the very least. Give this poor Russian man your one fucking dollar to play his, like, to play his game. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds good, honestly. Yeah, they're really good. I was googling it just now. I it 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 looks way more interesting than uh, I was imagining it. I was imagining it as like, oh, it's like an anime. It's not an anime. No, it it it's like, like a the, Microsoft the girl, monstrosity. The main girl does have kind of like an anime ish art style to her. Sure, but like, but even then, like the environments are all like. These like deep dark blacks and reds. Um, it's it's super cool. So, hey sir, yes, what is? You've had us on pins and needles. I've had you on what pins is this and needles. This is a little surprise that I've been putting together now, because I knew we were going to talk about the Dark Knight, and I was like, hmm, what, what what how do we how do we talk about the Dark Knight and we make it a little little bit interesting. So, I decided to do something, something a little, uh, a little for the fans, a little, a little uh, showcase extravaganza, if you will. And I call it the Acer Quiz. So, <clears throat> uh, we've okay. been doing this podcast for a few years now. I think we've all grown to become friends, grown to become allies in this uh, brutal world we live in. But how well do you think I, you I really know I me? don't know. I don't know what we'd call us, but I suppose that's what we could call us. How well do you think you know me? <laughs> How well do I think I know you? I don't know. Do you think you know me better than Boken? Boken, do you think you know me better than Daniel? Well, we're about to find <laughs> no. out. It's the Acer quiz. <laughs> you know, I actually sometimes think about the fact that I don't even know what you do for a living. <laughs> it's a secret. I I steal uh, DVDs, players. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I don't really care what you guys do for a living as long wow. as you're not fucking criminals. Oh, the, stealing DVD players is totally legal. Okay, that's fine then. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the Acer quiz. Question one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna score both of you. What's Acer's favorite food? Meat. That's not... You need to say the thing properly. <laughs> Steak. All right. What do you think, Boken? Uh, whale meat. <laughs> Boken is actually correct. It's smoked yes! salmon. Yes, what? Get yeah, it's, fucked. It's smoked salmon what? or whale steak. I haven't had whale steak in many years, though. Um, because I remember because... him whining about the fact that they're not murdering whales anymore. <laughs> no, okay, so so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whale meat is super good. But uh, all these hippies want to <laughs> save the whales. Save the whales, they say. And now I can't have my whale steaks. Bogan gets one point. Uh, question two. Which is better? A turtle... Or cat? Cat. Bogan? Mm. Cat. No, you're both wrong. It's turtle because it has more shell. Uh, number three. But you like cats. Oh. Yeah, you, you have posted pictures of cats. Yeah, but turtles are better. Ugh. Number three. <laughs> Could Acer known. take a kangaroo in a fight? <laughs> the answer is uh, no and I will take my point how about you Daniel what do you think 
I think that you think that you could take on a kangaroo. Yeah, I think that too. <laughs> All right. Well, Bogan was correct. The answer is no. <laughs> so it's two to nothing. Daniel, you have like seven chances to uh, start earning some points. Okay. And we're about to get a bit more like esoteric here. Um, oh, no. uh, now's when we're getting esoteric. <laughs> oh, the last question is going to be something about snail, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Question four. What Yu-Gi-Oh deck did Acer pilot for a year before the meta caught on and it became tier one? I've talked about this like <laughs> 10 times. You, you have talked about this and I have no idea. Dude, I, the, the one with Dark Magician Girl. No. It was the Invoked Shit Doll deck. I even ran an Endymion engine for a bit and I would have accepted that as an answer. But uh, yeah, Invoked Shit Doll. Uh, I was Shut on up. that before all of you, you <laughs> hacks. Uh, oh, they, re they released Dark Magica cards. Invoked the doll was good now. Invoked the doll was good before Dark Magica. Dark Magica made the deck weaker, if anything. All right. Question five. When Acer was eight or nine years old, memory, memory fails me. I was around that age. Uh, he was sent to a farm for a summer. In that farm was another troubled boy who was Acer's nemesis. What did Acer do to him on the farm that made sure the differences could never be resolved? What the fuck kind of question is this? <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say... I don't know. You, 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 you fucking... You gave him a slushy or something? A swirly? I, I want to say you damaged something and set him up for it. Like you framed him. Nah, you're both wrong. I peed on him while he was having a chat with another friend of his. Oh, God, Jesus. that's fucking gross. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, all right, now for six. What's Acer's coffee drink of choice? What How the fuck are we supposed to know? I what say it mean? every fucking time we, we record. Every time I'm like, nice. oh, I'm going to get a, and then I come back after I have it. Yeah, you get, no, a, you get you, a coffee. That's not true. What all you say is that you're getting coffee. You don't say what kind of coffee. I sometimes say what kind of coffee. Sure. That's bullshit. What's my coffee drink of choice, boys? I don't I don't even understand what you're looking for. Like, Dark roast. Like, you know, Fre you go to a French coffee shop. Press. You all, no, you go to a coffee shop and you order, like, a specific kind of coffee. What kind of coffee do I like? Uh, AeroPress? Uh, dark roast, espresso. No, a latte. You guys suck at this. By oh way. God, oh you God. suck! Fuck off, a latte. This quiz is fucking terrible. <laughs> this, you guys are fucking god awful friends. Let me tell you that. <laughs> All right, question oh, seven. Excuse us for not remembering like esoteric bullshit or just stuff that you've just never told us about before. Yeah. You have never said you're getting a latte. <laughs> what MMO? Because I would have made fun of you every time. Question seven. Remember. What MMO does Acer to this day refuse to play? All of them? Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Bogan is right. All of them. <laughs> all of them? Fuck off. <laughs> I literally wrote down that's all a, of hey, them. No, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's bullshit. You used to play RuneScape. Yeah, but, but I refuse to play to it now. Number eight. Before studying engineering, what was Acer's college path? What did I study before I studied engineering, guys? Um, history. Daniel? Law? <sighs> Economics. Eh. <sighs> I keep posting these memes I make about Frederick List, and you guys are like, haha, what a good economics meme, eh, sir? And you, you, no, you, you didn't figure you this out. You must have studied this. What, who, Friedrich List? What? <laughs> he's like, he's a German economist from the 1700s. Nobody, nobody knows about this guy. <laughs> uh, he was big on protectionism. Anyways, uh, what was, okay, question nine. What was Acer's diet the last time he was on a cut? And what was his calorie intake for the last month of the cut? 
what the what? fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Fruits and a thousand? Poke? I don't fucking know. Rice and eggs? Ooh, and how many calories? I, uh, you have never told us about calories. You are rigging this quiz. But I'm going to say 1,700. All right. Well, that's a terrible cut. No, uh, you both get half cuts? a point. I didn't you both even know get what you're talking point. about. Daniel, you're right. It was 1,000 calories. Uh, and Bogan? No, Bogan, you don't get a point. Because you just said rights and X. My uh, calories were distributed between cappuccinos, X, and headache medicine. Um, number 10. And this is the final question. It's Dude, worth hold 20 on. You points. Ate nothing, you ate nothing but eggs? And cappuccinos. And yeah, it's not why good. Not... You shouldn't do that. And w why not latte? Because I didn't know how to make them yet. I could make cappuccinos back then. This this quiz is falling apart. No. This quiz is makes no sense. This quiz is amazing. I spent no, like no, I spent not. five hours putting this quiz together yesterday. <laughs> you spent five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question 10. And this question is worth 20 points. So if you get this, you win. Assuming the other guy doesn't also get this. Boken is currently in the lead. But whoever gets this could... Uh, that This is the game-changing question. And it also... Uh, no, this is the game-winning question because you can't make 20 points otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I see you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard not to notice. <laughs> Question 10. What is Acer's favorite movie? We have talked about this. Hmm. Yeah? Your favorite movie. I like how silent things got because you like both of you both of you crap on my quiz, but when it comes time for like you to actually win, both of you like actually take it serious. <laughs> no, no, because no, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think like This is like the this is the first uh, like real question where I could <laughs> maybe come up with the answer. Yeah. Exactly. It's amazing how many right ones you got <laughs> considering. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have gotten at least a few points for some of them. And you were like, no. You didn't get anything right. You got one point for eggs. No, no, for a thousand calories. You got half a point. Yeah, but yeah, but I also said you were, you were like, oh, what MMO would I never play? Final Fantasy XIV is correct. No, all of them was the answer, though. No, that's bullshit. Final Fantasy XIV is a correct answer. Daniel, Don't give me that shit. Daniel, I'm looking at the give rules up, for the quiz right now, and it says that you have to answer what is written in the in the response. Oh, sh oh shut up. You're so full of shit. I think the rules <laughs> just say fuck Daniel. <laughs> also, Daniel, I love how you're super mad that you didn't get a point for Final Fantasy XIV. We're like... Bogan would have been able to guess that too. So it wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, obviously. But but it did change something because Bogan got a point for that question and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how you think. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But what's my favorite movie, Bogan? I don't know. I... I'm going to say Apocalypse now. I don't think it is, though. So. All right, Daniel? No, that's, def that's definitely not it. Um, I'll 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 give the points to whoever comes closer. How about that? <laughs> closer, I guess. What? Yeah. How can you be closer to a movie choice? Oh, you'll see. Because okay. I don't think Daniel's gonna um... get it. Daniel's like scrolling through our Discord chats, like. My no, favorite I'm not. Movie. I'm really not. <laughs> I'm not scrolling through anything. I'm literally just trying to think of what what you would pick. Um, I don't know. 
I'm just gonna say something like Goodfellas, whatever. All right. The, I don't think it's your. I don't think it's your number one, but I think at the very least, you you like it. I like it, but it's not my number one. My favorite no. movie is There Will Be Blood. I've talked about this. Oh, mm, that's you? a good choice. Yeah, yeah. That's an okay, choice. I feel like um, no. Okay, which is closer to I? There will be blood. Is it Apocalypse Now, or is it Goodfellas? See, here's the thing. You're both talking about movies which explore like how systems set up in America uh, create like human horrors. So like you, you're, it's kind of like fifty fifty. Neither one of you has Daniel Day Lewis in it though. I'm gonna say. Uh, okay, but. You have to admit, you do prefer Martin Scorsese as a director. To uh, Francis Ford Coppola. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yes. Bogan, what's your counter offer? Um, you have read the book to Apocalypse Now? That's true. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. true. I read yeah, Heart of exactly. Darkness and I read Oil, the book that they made There Will Be Blood from, but I never read the Goodfellas book. Hmm. True. However, however, because you read the book, that also soured your opinion somewhat on Apocalypse Now. You were like, eh, Apocalypse Now is not as good as it could have been because uh, of your of how you compared it to the book. That's true. And I prefer There Will Be Blood to the book Oil. I think it's a much better movie than the book is. So, hmm. Fogin, do you have a rebuttal? Okay, here's here's a... Here's another thing. Which do you prefer between Apocalypse Now and Goodfellas as movies? Ooh. No, that's not fair. This is this is which one is more like it. I'm going to deduct half a point time... from you, Daniel, because you're trying to uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to cheat. I'm not cheating. I was just cheating. <laughs> trying to like grease up the wheel. You can't hmm. take away half a point for something like that. Shut up. I absolutely can. You're back at zero. <laughs> okay, whatever. But this could be the game. I don't fucking care. Let's move on. <laughs> Neither one of you I wins. Have, You're I terrible have no friends. rebuttal, to be honest. I was going to say, uh, yeah, it came out closer to There Will Be Blood, but that's not true because Goodfellas is an 80s movie. Yeah. No, yeah, it's a so 90s movie. That oh, it's a 90s movie. Good, good, early, no. early 90s? Goodfellas came out in 1990. Yeah, okay. So you, you actually defeated your own point, which means I get my points. Yeah, that, that's get why I said Daniel. I have no rebuttal. <laughs> the quiz, neither one of you wins. I'm deducting all of your points. But you'll both be happy to know that after I made the Acer friendship quiz, I also made a Batman quiz that I'm going to ask you guys about. Oh, fuck. No, no now, more the, quizzes. Your quizzes is, are fucking terrible. <laughs> this is a good one. The thing is, though, these are the fucking no. You, you I, think I refuse. you'd think I made the Batman quiz first and then make the shit quiz, <laughs> but it was actually the no. opposite. It was just completely ego driven, and then you figured, oh, I can also make one about Batman. <laughs> well, it's too late. You you wasted it. You wasted your your quiz opportunity. We're not doing the other quiz. Too this bad. is a real quiz. I'm doing a I quiz. I don't care. I'm it's doing too a quiz. late. The no, commenters want wasted. a quiz. No. Bogan, I'm doing another quiz. We're not doing two quizzes in the same episode. That's not happening. No, you can do the Batman quiz for Rises. No, I want to do another quiz for Rises. Oh, Jesus. No, no, you can't. You cannot do a third quiz. It's not happening. You need to do a Rises quiz that is actually about Rises because I'm not going to be able to answer any fucking comic questions. <laughs> Look. I'll do the Batman quiz now, and it's the final quiz no. I ever do. How about that? No. no. No more quizzes. I don't want to do any quizzes. I this is a real, real quiz. Rises quiz. I feel like you guys are bringing a lot of baggage into this quiz, <laughs> quiz <I don't>... conversation. <laughs> I wonder whose fault that is. <laughs> yeah, I wonder whose fault that is, whether that you two are terrible friends. Huh, whose fault is that? How are we, how are we <laughs> terrible friends? Because you asked esoteric questions uh, that most come people on, you in know your the life probably don't quizzes. even know about. You know they do. I bet even like I bet even like your closest family members would hear would hear this quiz and be like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, don't give us that shit. Just, just just for the record, you don't know shit about me. I could do a bogan quiz. I could get no, like a seven can't. out of ten. No, you wouldn't. No way. Yes, I could. 
I could I could make a real quiz and you would, would get no points. <laughs> this was a real quiz. It was all true. <laughs> this yeah, was not calorie intake. <laughs> what you fucking ate for a month or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> how about oh wait, how about I actually show you something? I'm gonna give you a preview of the quiz and then you can decide whether or not you wanna do it, okay? No. How about we take no. a break? Here, here's the preview. I think that I think it's question three. Right. <laughs> oh, I accidentally gave you the answer. Hold on. Oh, I would have known. <laughs> this is this Asa is that just, quiz. We already know that answer. Asa just posted in chat the question: Who directed The Dark Knight? Yeah, I accidentally put the Christopher but Nolan's we all, name. We all know. Yeah, we all know who directed yeah, it. Yeah, because but... I put it in. I accidentally put it in, so that's how you know. No, we already knew the answer before you put it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I guess we'll never know because I accidentally put it in. <laughs> this is the caliber of the Shut Batman up. quiz. It's a real quiz. It's an actual it's quiz. Not... It's not a shit quiz. Is it only about the Dark Knight? It's only about Batman, but it's all stuff you guys could get. Oh, that sounds terrible. It's back. It's the dark. It, there, it. Let's see. Hold on. One, two, three. I think the well has been poisoned so thoroughly. I think there's like quizzes. Uh, yeah, it's 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 Dark Knight. You can always connect it to the Dark Knight. So how about this? We take a break, and we do another quiz. Just shotgun no. it real fast, and then we talk about the Dark Knight. I like it. No, we take a break. We talk about the Dark Knight, and if you then want to do the quiz after three hours of fucking recording, then go ahead, buddy. Chat. Chat, I'm gonna win him over in the break. Don't you worry. I'm fighting for you. Chat. Commenters. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> well, we'll be right back, everyone. Where have you been? Hey, everyone. We're back. And we're ready to talk about some fucking Batman. Y'all ready to talk about some fucking Batman? I fought for the quiz, but they nixed it. Send your hate mail to them. Uh, if you guys really desperately want the quiz, we'll bring it back when we talk about Dark Knight Rises. I will, but only. I will only. never. I will never bring this quiz back. This was a one-time thing. Oh, no. Please, you can't do that. <laughs> Think of the fans, Acer. I did. And then I was betrayed. <laughs> oh, by us, not by them. Yeah, 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 by you. So, The Dark Knight. You know, I haven't seen this movie since I first saw it in, like, high school when it first came out. So it was really fucking weird watching it again, to like, last night. Um, what about you, Boken? I know Acer has rewatched this movie like five billion fucking times. But what about you, Boken? Um, <clears throat> I want to say between when it came out and yesterday, I watched it once again. Ugh. But I'm not sure and I don't remember when. So not that much. So this is your third time? Yes, I think so. Okay. Acer, why have you seen this movie so many times? Because it's a good movie, man. What do you mean? I owned it on DVD back in the day, and I would just play it over and over again. It's a good movie. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you think it still holds up? Yeah. Do you still prefer Batman Begins, though? Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> I need to really stress on the audience for especially for those that are younger and didn't like grow up with the with the movie when it came out but like this movie was a huge fucking deal when it came out. Batman Begins when it came out didn't like people were like oh yeah it's a pretty good movie but it didn't make like a huge huge deal. The Dark Knight was like the biggest fucking deal when it came out. Like everyone was talking about it. Like I distinctly remember, um, like, 
people on the internet were were making videos about it and were like losing their goddamn minds. Um, people at school were were going on about it. Like it was just the biggest fucking thing. Everyone was doing the Heath Ledger impression for some reason. Yeah, how much do that? you think Heath Ledger was the reason why this blew up? Like it did. Um, because I, he, he passed away shortly after this came out, right? Or right no, before? shortly after it was filmed. Okay. So I think he's large. I think, I think a lot of it was that people really loved that performance. But I don't think his performance is the best thing about the movie. So, like, I think, you, I think you don't I, think that. I don't think that. I think there are better performances in this movie. But uh, uh, I think I agree. Yeah, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I think people really latched on to Heath Ledger, and that's largely why it was successful. Um, yeah. Um, you think there are better performances by yeah. him? I think Gary Oldman Ooh. does a better performance. I think he's the best performance in the movie. People like people sleep mm. on just how good he is as Gordon. Yeah, he is really good. I'm not going to argue with that. But like, I felt like Joker kind of stole the movie. Like, yeah, it's, it's I feel a much, like if he was, it's a much more sort I of like showcasey it, performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's like the star of the movie, basically. Yeah. I felt like I felt like. If it wasn't for his performance, though, this move—I don't think this movie would have been a big deal. I think it would have, like, I think the movie, like, obviously, it would have suffered if he wasn't in it. I don't think he's the reason the movie is as good as it is, but I agree. I think people, I don't think it would have been the like cultural sort of behemoth that it was if he hadn't been in it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's kind of a perfect storm because the performance is really good. But I also mm -hmm. just like the character of the Joker. I think he's really well written, and he's he's a good villain. Yeah, and just, it had like, been the, the material is there. It had been nineteen years since people last saw the Joker on this in the cinema. More of that, please. Give me nineteen years away from this fucking <laughs> character at, at this <laughs> point. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> but like, I remember when I first saw this movie. I was like, this is one of the best movies ever. Like, yeah, same. Granted, granted, like at the time, this was like what, like fifteen years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, my tastes were very different at the time. Um, so I, all I needed for a movie to be good was just like action and special effects and stuff like that, and I and I was happy. So at the time for me it was like 10 out of 10 great you know one of the greatest movies. Watching it again now as an adult and my tastes have obviously developed over time. For me it's it went from like oh man 10 out of 10 to like eh, it's like a 7 or an 8, you know. Whoa. It's still a good movie. It's still a good movie. I enjoyed it, but like I don't think it holds up to the insane amount of hype that uh that was surrounding the movie. Um, when it first came out, I don't think any movie could though. Like I, th I think no. this is still like a ten out of ten movie, but there is obviously like this sort of myth that has come about surrounding it. I also think it's really interesting when you look at this movie that there was like a good five or six years after it released where people were still trying to dissect what was it that made it good. Like you had a lot of like origins. Oh, people want to see the origin story of characters, and that really started like with Batman Begins and this. You had like, oh, gritty and realistic. We have to redo RoboCop to be that. And it's like, no, it's it's not just that you have one of these features and that makes it good. It, it's like we were talking about in the beginning. It's you have an actual creative vision that's allowed to say something that makes it, makes it good. Yeah, like there are themes here. Yeah. And there's a script that... Place towards these themes and has a good resolution. Like I don't even think this is a well. It, it, it is an origin story for Two Face, maybe. Yeah. Um. But then also Two Face dies. So whatever. 
Um, Dude, the fucking... There's, there's no origin story for the Joker. They no. specifically make fun of having an origin story because he tells the story of how he got his, his uh, scars like yeah, two times ways. and asks it a, f- a third time and he tells different stories every time. Yeah. It's like you're not supposed to know why he's the way he is. It's not the point. No, agreed. Agreed. I got. I gotta say though, I didn't really like Harvey Dent's like fall as a character because like the whole movie, he's he's a, a Boy Scout with a few moments here and there where like a li- a little questionable, and then at at the end he just like completely flips and just turns into a murderous psychopath. It is a bit abrupt, yeah. I mean, granted, half his face came off, but like <laughs> the effect—the effect was so bad. It didn't. Oh my god! You think it so? did not hold up at all? I don't think it hold holds up. At I think all. it really like, it does looks... hold up. What are you talking about? His I... half his face? Like, come on! That that, that looks so silly. No, the it eff- looks good. No, the effect is terrible. You guys are just you just you guys are just haters. No, the I like this movie a lot. The effect looks awful and it's just it you know it's cgi up. from whatever 12 years ago it's fine but ugh. As there's a, one it, i think there's one scene where it doesn't look good and that's when he's like lying down and he kind of turns his head and you can sort of see that it like it's like his face is a, it's at a wrong angle like the the cgi face where it should be like it it makes his face look kind of concave. Um, I think that's the only <laughs> yeah, no, time it looks wrong. I, oh, this no, is interesting. It, it just no, it looks like cheap, not cheap, but kind of uncanny Aged. valley CGI. It's the thing about like uncanny valley effects, and I first noticed this when people were talking about Tarkin in Rogue One, and I noticed this again now that She Hulk was out. It's like people genuinely react to this stuff very differently. Like sometimes the uncanny valley just doesn't work for this person in this moment. I think this might because like I I watch Tarkin and I'm like ooh that doesn't look right. I watch the She Hulk trailers and I'm like ooh that looks wrong. But I look at the Dark Knight and I'm like yeah this looks fine. It's really interesting how it just sometimes people react to it and sometimes they don't. I think the problem is that um, this is a very practical movie. There are very few CGI moments, and I think the CGI looks specifically CGI. Like, this is not makeup. And that's why it stood out to me. Yeah. I can see that. I also thought it was weird that Harvey was talking to Gordon, and he was like, it's like, say it. What What did you guys used to call me? Say it. And he was like, oh, the, the, the two-face. And I'm like, what? When was this ever established? Like, there's nothing. Yeah, there is. There really wasn't. It was established. Okay. It's uh, it when they first yeah. meet Harvey Dent in the office. Um, uh, Gordon says uh, when he's trying to get like warrants for the banks. Gordon says that you know, oh, you know, you're Gotham's White Knight, and Harvey's like, that's not what they call me in uh, internal affairs. And Gordon's like, yeah, I uh, wouldn't know anything about that. Because he's the guy that the city sent in to like clean up the police department after Batman begins. Yeah, it was okay, that, no, there, no, that's there's this I... ongoing plot point of him not trusting, you know, Harvey, Harvey, De- uh, no, uh, Gordon's, whatever fellow what, officer. No, what I mean is, um, they didn't do a good job of explaining why they called him Two Face. Like, I don't think they needed it. Like, I think it's pretty self-explanatory because he's the guy who was, okay. like, getting rid of the cops who were bad cops. And that makes him Two-Face? Yeah, because he would have had to, like, be buddy-buddy with them to get in on what the, what was going on and then he, like, snitches on them to the judges. Hmm. Although Daniel's right, that doesn't really fit the character that they set up because he's supposed to be such a hero. Yeah, like, that, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, the whole movie, he he's portrayed as, like... The like Batman himself even says that you're supposed to be the best of us, but then we're also supposed to buy that he's two faced when there wasn't really anything that that was uh, portrayed through his character throughout the movie that would get across 
that he is Two-Face. At most, there's like a few moments here and there that kind of hint that, oh, maybe there's, you know, um, a little bit morally gray with him. But like, I would a little bit morally gray is not the same as Two-Face. See, see, I, I would I would disagree because this guy is very cl- he does not believe in the conventional way of cleaning up crime. Like he is a big Batman fan. He he is not at all convinced that the cops can do the job. He was the guy who was investigating them. He knows how corrupt it is. And then at the end, when he does, when he takes the turn, that's the moment where it's like, well, you know, maybe Batman's way isn't enough either. Maybe we need to go one step further. And he just personally goes and kills all the mobsters. You'll notice like with, I love the moment when he kills Salvatore Moroni, uh, who's played, Eric Roberts is so good in this. But uh, he when he kills him, it's like, oh, I can't kill you, but I'm going to kill your driver because I, like, he doesn't actually care. Like, he just wants vengeance. It is about vengeance to him. It's not about justice or, un- or like the chaotic fairness of the universe or whatever. He just wants to kill these people to get revenge for what they did to him. Is it though? Because what if the coin had come up twice? Uh, I, I, yeah, but Yeah, but that's the thing though. Right, you don't need to flip it twice. You just flip it once if you're going to kill him, and then he just he yeah. flipped it twice specifically because he wanted a different outcome. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I also he was hired. Um, this is the best Aaron Eckhart performance ever. I think nobody has been able to utilize him as an actor as well as Nolan did here, and he was hired because of uh, Thank You for Smoking. Have you guys ever watched that movie? Yeah, but I no. don't remember much. It's I love that movie. He, he like his visual design in that movie. He looks like a cigarette, where he's like his <laughs> hair like blonde, and, like a cigarette stub, and then he's just like he, the the, co- the suits that he's wearing. He looks like a cigarette, and he's this horrible like sleazy salesman for this horrible horrible product. That's a bit of a side tangent, but I love that. I remember that being a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. I have Let's, to say, um, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just I wanted to structure this a bit. So I kind of wanted to jump into the beginning. Actually, I wanted, um, I wanted to jump into the first 40 minutes, maybe hour of this movie. Okay. Um, all I was going to say real quick was, I think the dialogue in this movie is better than it was in Begins. There, oh, there, yeah. was still some, there was still some dialogue where I was like, ah, that's... That's not great, but there was a lot less of the like characters monologuing at each other in this one. There was still some of that, but it wasn't quite as pompous as it was in <laughs> Batman Begins. Yeah, I, I mean, the wonder di- if the that's just because better. I wonder if that's because you have like a bigger cast. So, like the pro- one of the problems with Batman is that when he's in the costume. It's very hard to have like an, a person talking to him because he's supposed to be like this shadowy figure. Um, so I don't know, like just writing conversations for that always looks really weird, I guess. Whereas here you have like you have Harvey in the mix. Gordon is a much bigger player. Um, you'll notice that Bruce and Alfred, like they have very few conversations where Bruce is in the Batman costume because I think I think Nolan and the gang realized that this costume just it is inherently silly. So you need to like you you never see Marvel superheroes wear masks anymore. They always like Spider Man does it, but they always show the faces so that you can like empathize with them. Uh, Nolan picked up on that, I think, because most of the interaction, uh, most of the interactions, they don't have the mask on. Like that great scene where Batman is like mourning after he failed to rescue Rachel. He's like sitting in the co- in the Batman costume, but he doesn't have the mask on because Christian Bale had to do some acting there. Yeah, I mean, the suit also... St- Christian Bale just does, does not look good in the suit. No. He just doesn't. His performance was, was much fixed- better, though. It does look before. better compared to Begins, but still... No, no, I, I mean, his, his performance specifically. He, I, he was... I don't know. I he, like he was the way Begins more suit better. Ugh. Yeah, I, I think uh, the rubbery mask in Begins is not as good as the mask he has here, um, where it's like more sort of hard plastic. But the actual suit in Begins, I think, looks better. This is a bit too sort of military-grade tactical equipment for me. 
I think I think the new Batman movie, they think the suit looks better. I think it, I think Pattinson looks better in the suit. He looks more natural in it. Yeah, I think that's a better Just suit. Mhm. Um I also have to say and this isn't totally a fair comparison given that the Batman just came out, but like the Dark Knight visually looks so fucking boring compared to the the Batman. Like, yeah. We it, talked about this I think when we talked about Batman Begins where it is like one of the problems with like you look at Batman Begins and it's like it was visually based on uh Blade Runner. Like Christopher Nolan sat the entire production crew down and they watched that and he said we're going to do that but with Batman. And that's when you get to like the Narrows and it looks really sort of unique. It looks very comic booky whereas in The Dark Knight and especially Dark Knight Rises it's just Chicago. Yes. It yeah. was just a city. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so beautiful about the Batman is that it's filmed in like Liverpool or Edinburgh or somewhere. And it's like, oh, this is like an actual city that looks like a really interesting place. It's not just a highway. Yes. I like they did such an amazing job with the visuals of, of the Batman. Like that. That movie is drenched in atmosphere in a way that the Dark Knight just isn't. Like yeah. the Dark Knight, by comparison, visually just looks so fucking bland. It's very sterile, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's not trying to be like any sort of fantasy. Uh, it's See, just it's, kind of a cop movie with us with a guy in a bat costume. I, I agree. Yeah, um, but I remember last time I complained about the fact that Batman just looks goofy as fuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and I think uh, I I thought a lot of it was the lighting that was just way too bright, so his suit just looked dumb. And they they figured that out here because I never I never had a problem with Batman in the scene. He just Here's he looked okay. Like I think it came um, at the cost of just the movie looking less interesting. Yeah, but Batman kind of melded into it better. I yeah, think I we're do gonna. Think that I, I think I agree. He did. There was less scenes where he stuck out like a sore thumb. I think you're gonna put when we watch Rises. I think you're gonna notice that they went back on that because in Rises they did something that they didn't do in The Dark Knight, and that is they show the legs of Batman a lot more. And when you see his full costume with the legs, he looks really ridiculous. In The Dark Knight, <laughs> okay. like his legs are always sort of in shadow because. Like, just the texture of the legs, the way the plastic is molded, it just looks really silly. Um, so, uh, yeah, in, in The Dark Knight Rises, I think that movie is filmed with much less skill than this one was. Like, the final battle against Bane at the end, where he's just like, oh, we're just in broad daylight, and it looks ridiculous. Like, it, is, it just yeah. it clearly should have been set at night. That's The costume looks silly when it's not in darkness. Also, I wanted to throw this out there just because it was something that I noticed and I thought was really strange uh -huh. was that there were some scenes that it looked like it was filmed with a digital camera. And it looked like there were some scenes that were filmed on like a film reel. Uh, well, yeah. So this was like this. Christopher Nolan is responsible for the explosion of IMAX in blockbusters. Uh, there were four IMAX cameras that existed in the world when they made this movie. And he broke one of them in that scene where Batman, like Bruce Wayne, is driving his regular car and he crashes into that car trying to kill Harvey Dent. When they were filming that, one of the IMAX cameras broke. And the technology for shooting in IMAX, you had to have like a gigantic crane to mount the camera. And it was very like, you have to, only very specific scenes could be shot in IMAX. Whereas if you want the camera to move around a lot in like a crowd, you, you can't do that with an IMAX camera at that time. They're just too uh, cumbersome. But uh, you could probably do that now. I imagine the technology has gotten way better. But you also, uh, I think in The Dark Knight Rises is a worse offender on this, where the aspect ratio of the movie keeps jumping around. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at, where the aspect ratio in this movie, it kept going back and forth between, sometimes you would have the, the widescreen border, sometimes you didn't, and I was just like... What the fuck is happening? Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry, Boken. You you wanted to uh, you structure wanted to talk this. About... <laughs> Let's get into the the plot. Just sure. In general, go go ahead. Um, I I kind of forgot how how plot heavy this movie is. There are so many 
plot points and like threads and characters um that at the beginning i thought oh my god this is this is going to be a nightmare and it's going to be really difficult to keep track of everything uh and it kind of was so but i do think that most of the things that are set up are actually paid off i, uh, I was gonna say surprisingly the movie it it it, it feels like it could have been really easy to get lost in it but I, I think the movie does a good job of keeping everything pretty neat and organized and easy to understand. Like it, there was never a moment watching the movie where I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" I was, I, I felt like I was like pretty consistently engaged throughout the movie, and I understood what was going on. There was one scene, I think two scenes, like right after each other, where I was completely confused. Um, like one was where that lawyer comes up to uh, Gordon, uh, to to Morgan Freeman and demands money or uh, the accountant and uh, the accountant I guess yeah yeah and it was like who the fuck is this guy what what are they talking about you know it came out of nowhere and i kind of yeah. uh, that that guy then comes Mr. back in the Reese. talk show that was that was somewhat paid off then because then it played to the we have like the Joker is forcing people to make a decision to you know do something uh, evil to save themselves, yeah. which is also the ending. You know that that kind of played into it. That got pay paid off right before that. There was like a crime scene investigation where Batman then like took a piece of the wall with a bullet hole out. Yeah, and then ran a bunch yeah, of tests, that was so and it was convoluted. completely. Like, what is this? Like, what is this room? Who fucking died there? What are they talking about? What are they doing? And that that came out of nowhere too, huh. and that I'm not even sure how that factored into the rest of it. But uh, otherwise, so, uh, yeah. the Joker said he was going to kill Harvey Dent, but he couldn't get to the real Harvey Dent, so he killed these two people. One of them was like Steve Harvey, and the other one was Patrick Dent. So it's like, well, technically, uh, he killed Harvey Dent. And uh, he gave okay. him the hint that he was going to kill the mayor. Okay. Like, I, I, it's, I think it's kind of a ridiculous scene, too. And this is the biggest problem I have with this movie. And the Dark Knight trilogy on a whole is it's like a big offender on this, is that when Batman takes the bullet, like the, the brick with a bullet in it, he puts it in a computer, and the computer reassembles the bullet and looks at, like, the fingerprint. And he like has to shoot the bu the same bullet from different caliber guns to figure out what gun shot it, and then he can configure from there the algorithm to reassemble it. It's like you are not a detective. I could do that if I had that computer. Like this is not yeah. a detective movie. Batman is a shit detective in all of these movies. He just has really cool gadgets that do all the job for him. That's true, but I also think like we don't need. A big detective side plot. It no, kind of worked in. But in he's the, the world's Batman. greatest detective. Yeah, but I, you know, it's just, it's already hard to follow this movie with all the, uh, you know, the police trying to find the Joker and the Joker having all these convoluted plans, and then the mobsters are in it somewhere. I don't also need like complicated detective scenes where sure. they're figuring out a bunch of clues. You know, sure. Uh, but it's I just think going they could to at least too uh, much. I think they could at least hide it better, though. Not don't give Batman like, uh, like that. That just that scene of him reassembling the bullet. I feel that's such so offensive because it could have just been like, you know, he goes to the crime scene, he turns on his detective vision, and he's like, "Hmm, I notice a fingerprint there on the on the newspaper. Hmm, I'm gonna check yeah. out this newspaper." And then he's like, "Okay." No, I agree. It's just like I agree. There's so many they... different ways of getting Batman the knowledge to go for like. Thomas Schiff or whoever he was or whatever is just like this is so convoluted you could do this better yeah yeah totally no I totally agree I totally agree it felt like such an uh, a, like a ridiculous just overly complicated way of, of getting like really simple information yeah like why it, it felt more like they had this these props like for the for the gun and the and like they they had and they, it felt like more like this is really cool and we want to show this off and <laughs> we need an excuse to show it off rather than it serving the story in like a beneficial way. Let me ask you a question, guys. Do you think this movie needs to be two hours and thirty minutes? I don't think it feels that long. 
Like, I think this movie has a really cracking pace. See, that's... See, that's the that that's the thing though, where on one hand, this movie does have like a really quick pace to it, but I think part of the problem though is that there were parts of the movie where I felt like the movie wasn't breathing properly. Like it felt like a little too like things happening, things happening, things happening, and it felt like there was a lack of just moments where the movie kind of just slows down for a bit and be like, hey, let's just chill. But then the movie's also two and a half hours. So, like, if you have too many of those breathing scenes, the movie would be, like, two hours and, like, fucking 50 minutes or three hours. So, it's like... Yeah. It's... Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's it's not ideal. I think they struck a really good balance. Um, I think this is another one of those complaints where, like, the Rises... Ooh, that that one. That one does not have as good a pace as this one does. Well, I guess we'll see you next time. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know that uh, Nolan, he was on the record saying like, you know, if I'd have known that I was going to be doing a third movie, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have killed Harvey Dent. I would have kept <laughs> him alive. It's like, yeah, you probably should have done that because, you know. he Yeah, he Harvey Dent does feel kind of wasted in this movie. No, I disagree. I think I, I, th- this yeah. is one of the other points that I didn't remember is how integral he actually is to this entire plot. He is. No, what what I mean is his death is wasted. Yeah, but I, like in hindsight, I think it's wasted. I think at the time you watch it and it's like, if you just watch The Dark Knight as a standalone, it's like, that's a really sort of tragic closure to this guy's story. But when you factor The Dark Knight Rises in, you're like, you really like you could have done something better if you'd have had Harvey Dent. I I feel yeah. like it would have been better if Harvey Dent uh, became Two Face at the end of the movie, and then Dark Knight Rises was the Harvey Dent movie. I think that was what Nolan said also, or or he said that he was gonna. I I don't remember quite how he uh quite how he worded it, but I think the idea was that. This would have been the Joker movie then, and the, and Harvey Dent would have been the next one because I think Two Face is his favorite villain, and he was like the reason he used Two Face was because well I get to do one more Batman movie, so Two Face I'm I just gotta use him because I don't know if I'll get to again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is a shame because I feel like we would we would have gotten a much better third movie. If that had been the case, yeah, and I think I think Dark Knight would have been a stronger movie as well because I feel like the stuff with Two Face is undercooked, and I think it, yeah, in the third act, I think when he's killing the mobsters, I think that could have been developed yeah. more. Yes, yeah, all all, ba- ba- all the stuff with Harvey Dent is fine. I think all the stuff when he becomes Two Face becomes an issue. Yeah. Like that, not not to say it's a complete train wreck, does because we point out there's some good stuff that uh, that still happens. But like he could have ended up such a stronger character had this had just been his setup, and then Rises was his movie. Yeah, but you you read the you read the Long Halloween and Dark Victory, didn't you? Not yet. Um, all right. I want. I, I need to read uh, Year One first. All right. All right. I think I'm still fine with Two Face though, because like he is, they do a good job making him this idealistic character who's like almost unbreakable, but then he breaks, and you know it's it's not really about uh, the character itself, but what him turning evil would actually do to public morale. Yeah, and so sure. you know his character kind of transcends just himself and becomes sort of a symbol I, which uh, i think that works perfectly fine at the ending i think this sure. movie does a really good job with him i love harry dent in this movie i'm just saying if he would have had another movie i would have preferred to see that third act of this movie basically be that movie i yes. i can see that yeah yeah man this is such a good movie but you know also <sighs> Um, I don't know. Should we jump to the ending? I feel like there's so many things happening in this movie. Bring up whatever you want. That's just... Very loose. (laughs) I don't know where to go. There's so much. 
There's so much happening. And I don't even uh, feel like talking about potential plot holes because, you know, I noticed some of them, but it's I feel like <gasps> it doesn't even matter, honestly. I mean, I... Uh, I did think it was kind of it was like hella silly when um, Batman and Rachel f- fell off the fucking building and they just like land on a car and they're fine. I was just like, yeah, Come on, really? Uh, that's that's another scene where it's like, oh, and what happened to the Joker? Did he just leave the party? Batman is just downstairs. Yeah, like it feels true. like there's a conclusion to that scene that's missing. That's missing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like and that's... also like falling in the car. Batman couldn't have shot like a grapple hook and swung himself like through the window of that's another building. Thinking. The whole time I was like, get your fucking grappling hook. Get your grappling hook. And then he just falls on the car and they're like, or his oh, glide we're fine. Cape. I'm like, what the fuck? Like he can glide with that cape. Yeah, they they don't really show how it happened like they don't really show how they land it's just okay they're both fine and then they cut away there are a couple of scenes like that another one is um the joker when he's in the in the holding cell and like he goads this police guy to actually attack him and then, yeah, the, and then the next and time they cut to him they're out of the holding cell and he got a knife to the guy and yeah, like, i think, a knife, that's, fine. A I think that's less offensive but it, was, it wasn't a knife it was a piece of glass fine then it's a piece of glass but still it feels like okay how did you like i understand what happened but you could have also just shown it you know i don't think you need to show that yes because what, what then, bothered, then i still what, have to wonder how did you even get the door open how did no one what, see what bothered this? me about that scene was why was a guy in there in the first place well so the joker wouldn't do any bullshit which he did well, they could have just, just kept lock him locked the alone. Fucking doors. They, just yeah, leave but, him in there alone. But but the Joker is good at getting out of situations, so they no, were probably scared. No, that's bullshit. No, they. Yeah, he got Boken. out because the guy was there. Guy, Boken. The reason why the guy was there was because they needed to move the story along. I think yeah, this is kind of. I feel like this is Not a kinda, nitpick. That's it. I feel like this is a nitpick. Like I don't really, uh, I don't really care. Like yeah, the Joker. Well, he I'm not. Tricked him I don't to get think out. it's a huge. I don't think it's a huge deal. It's like okay, whatever. But like, it is overly convenient. The the reason why I don't think it's a big deal is because the way the Joker is written in this, I think he can get out of everything. Even if there's not a guy in there, he can. He has something planned to get out of there. Like, and that's what I like about this character is that he. His plans don't feel too convoluted, but they feel really smart, you know, and they they just kind of work out. And he's he's not physically intimidating or anything. He's just a really brilliant mastermind, and it's it's fun to follow what he's doing. Yeah. So also... you can have you can have the police guy not be in there, but I can already imagine how that scene would play out, and with him still getting out. I think. Um, one of the things about the Joker here is that I like he's not crazy, and this is something I hate about like the Jared Leto Joker. Really hate about the Jared Leto Joker is like all oh, the dark, twisted mind of the Joker. What could be in there? It's just like here you have a guy who's like society is really fucking shitty when you let them be shitty, and I don't believe in like the goodness of people, and I'm going to show you all just how evil society can really be. And it's just like okay, he's not crazy. He's like he's he comes he's, a, he, he's, he's unhinged. Just, yeah, he's just like oh I I get it. He's just evil, but I understand completely like where he's coming from. It's like it's it's a bad place, but it's not like there's no like oh the secret the secret twisted mind. What could what could hide behind that? What is just yeah. like no, this is just a very sort of reasonable character to exist in this world. Like the the Jared Leto Joker is kind of just random. Right? Yeah. It's cringe. And then this guy isn't <laughs> random. He he symbolizes chaos, but he produces the chaos to make a point. Yeah. Yeah, he even says himself, he's like, it's not about the money, it's about sending a message. Yeah. Like uh, that that is that is the thing where he burns the money, right? It's like, um that seems like a random move, like, oh, he doesn't even care about the money. But yeah, he doesn't care about the money. He has other plans. It's yeah. uh, there, there's intention behind that. I love that. Um, yeah, you're saying he's saying like, oh, I just want simple things. I want gasoline. 
I want gunpowder, and that shit's cheap. I don't need all this money. I so love I that. I love that uh, Mr. Han, I think his name is, like the Chinese banker guy, he's like on the pile of money when he burns it up, and the camera, like, you, you can see it, but the camera doesn't like linger on the fact that he's burning a human being tied to a chair, but it's just like, it's kind of there in the background, and it's really disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I Mr. Didn't pick Lau up on is that. his name, right? Yeah, Mr. Lau, sorry. Due to the, the way the way Heath Ledger slid down that pile of money was so smooth. Yeah, yeah, I, it was yeah, really pretty smooth. Can we talk about how fucking like Heath Ledger was the best actor of his generation? Like even even if we don't look at The Dark Knight, what a great actor! And who's alive? Shia LaBeouf, he's alive. Jared Leto, <laughs> he's alive. Ezra Miller gets to live. It's all these it's all these garbage people who get to live for some reason. But then it's like, oh, Heath Ledger. Yeah, he has to die. Come on, man. What is this? Yeah, it's, a, it, it's certainly a bummer. I'm not going to argue with that. I, especially Jared Leto. Fuck that guy. What a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. I hated that, him before like, it was popular, by the way. I mean, <laughs> regardless of his merits as an actor, just like his weird cult thing that he's cultivated, like, ugh. Him grooming little girls. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, uh, <laughs> it's not a good look, guys. No. Him and his shitty band. Yeah. Oh, it's Can okay that he's a oh. pedophile. He's a musician. It doesn't make it okay. Doesn't make it okay. Okay. I'm taking a hard stance on that, guys. Stop I hating don't on think Jared. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about how good the the effects in this movie are? Oh yeah, like just a lot of miniatures. Um, flipping over a fucking truck. That wasn't a miniature, was it? That looked real. Yeah, the, the truck wasn't a miniature. That they really flipped the truck. But like when oh the, damn the when the Batmobile is like when it crashes when it's in that like uh, that highway magic where it's like shot with a bazooka. That's all done with miniatures. Hmm. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, okay, yeah. That's really impressive. I didn't know that. It's like one third the size of the actual Batmobile, I believe, or something like that. Actually, probably some CGI, but a lot of that was miniature work. Yeah, the the motorbike, right? Uh, the motorbike is that's a real motorbike, but like when that's it shot out of the car, that's obviously CGI. Uh, yeah, and there's a moment where it like hits a wall and turns around. Oh um, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. Goes yeah. up and turns around. That was so CGI. But there's there another scene where it like drags across the ground, like to the side, and the wheels just spin like horizontal. Like they just flip, like yeah, on their axis. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like yeah, that's obviously CGI. Yeah, but I mean, it's a real bike. Yeah, it looks fucking sick. The guy really rode it. They uh, the original plan they had like a backpack the Batman would be able to like suck like vacuum the cape into and when they uh, were filming it the stunt guy was like no nah, I can probably just drive it with the cape I don't think it'll get tangled into it and it didn't but it's like awesome why would you risk that you crazy man <laughs> <laughs> I think and he's wearing up... I think he might be wearing a shorter cape for that though whoops like the cape may, I think it may just reach like his hip, and then the cape that goes from his hip onwards is like CGI. Yeah, possible, yeah. Uh, and then they but, blew up a fucking hospital. Yeah, they did that, that for real. It was a really sick explosion. Well, I mean, they didn't blow it up for real. Like the, when the glass and stuff is sh shooting out of the windows, that's all real. And when the glass is breaking and that, the explosion, like, they didn't obviously blow it up for real. It looked like they blew it up for real. They, no. It looked like that building was built for that uh, that purpose, to I, be honest. From memory, from the behind the scenes, that's like an abandoned... I think it was like a parking garage that was abandoned. Oh, yeah. And they like okay, retrofitted oh, it, was it to look like a hospital. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah, it could have been abandoned, but I, I, do you think that building still stands after this? Um, I, uh, I don't know. I so feel like... like hold on. Sorry, I, something's happening. Uh, I need to go check it out. I'll be right back. Oh my god. This fucking guy. Hey, Bogan, while Daniel's gone, why don't we do the Batman quiz? No. 
<laughs> and Talk about out. the hospital. There's some good questions there that you're missing out on. Here's a question for you. Do you think that building still stands? Uh, I don't know. Like, it may not necessarily stand anymore, but I don't think like like they blew it up, blew it up. I think it was like... Mm. Okay, f- right, false back. alarm. It was it was just my dad hammering something. <laughs> All right. Perfect, perfect. Um, but yeah, do, does the building still stand? I don't know. I think... Um, like the explosion you see in the movie where the news anchors are showing it is like just this gigantic black plume of smoke. That's not real. But I think like there is an element of the explosion that's real. Like it was it was blown up to some degree, but I, I if they kill like you don't blow up a building if you're trying to get rid of it. You like you just like it's it's all planned. You have to like structurally collapse it. You don't do that with just a gigantic explosion. Mm, yeah, that's true. But it was like, you know, the, it was the moment where the, the some of the bombs go up and then the Joker's like, like, oh, there should be more. What is going on? Yeah, that's unscripted. And then he presses the button a couple more times and that, yeah. then like so much explodes. That like, was unscripted so much because uh, some wiring just was connected differently or something. He, so Heath Ledger knew how much no. it should be exploding? Yeah, well, it was all supposed to blow up like just progressively as he was walking and they could only shoot this scene once uh, because it would cost way too much to like dress it all up again obviously he was like walking and then he realized okay the explosions have stopped and he just he just acted his way through it and then the explosion started up again yeah 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 i remember hearing about that (laughs) that's uh awesome yeah that's uh yeah it's pretty good that's so awesome i think i love this movie I don't love it, but it's still pretty good. You're just a hater, Daniel. <laughs> hater I is such a good pre- word. I still prefer the new one. I think that's fair. Uh, I think the new one is really informed by a lot of what these movies did. And, like, you, I don't think you're going to have the new one without this. I feel like this really laid the sure. groundwork for Batman moving forwards. And, like... Like, we talk here, we were like, you know, that's these movies, they're just filmed in Chicago. They don't look any, like, they don't look really interesting. I, it's, I don't think it's obvious that if they made the new movie absent these movies, that they would have filmed in Liverpool or whatever. I, I will say, I will say that watching it again, I'm like, yeah, this is, for me at least, the second best Batman movie. Like, it's still really good. Oh. Like, it still holds up for the most part. I have some issues with it. But it's still a good movie. I can't really argue with that. Yeah. So I had a good time. I was fully engaged, you know, rewatching it. I saw it a lot of fun. I think uh, in a lot of respects, I think it's better than Batman Begins. Um, it, it has less cringy dialogue. The, the still some fighting cringe. scenes are way better. Yep. Fighting scenes are much, much better. Uh, I, think, uh, I think a big reason for that is they focus less on like hand-to-hand combat and when they did they didn't do that shitty like quick cutting bullshit um there there was more set pieces of like cars and driving around and explosions and stuff yeah and they really had like a much bigger budget for this movie by comparison you can tell like they just went all out i love uh something people don't really talk a lot about with the dark knight it's a really funny movie I think there's like a pre like yeah. there are moments where you like laugh out loud funny. I love a uh, I'm I the agree. brains of I the agree, organization. Yeah. It's like what is this ridiculous clown show of a trial that's go- <laughs> that's going on? <laughs> uh there, there was some stuff that I thought was unintentionally funny, like that one guy who was like enough with the clown. <laughs> no, like- I think that's like <laughs> I think that ah uh, no probably that's unintentionally funny. Like, I, I think it was just that guy overacting. Like, he was overacting so hard. And he was just, like, so fucking pissed. But, you know, I the Joker mentions... I just found it funny. The Joker mentions when he enters, he's like, you know, this is why you have your little group therapy session in broad daylight. And you look at yeah. the, these sort of hardened mobsters and you're like, yeah, you know, you guys are kind of silly, ridiculous, pathetic losers. So it's like... Is he overacting or is this like exactly what this is? Because 
his first impulse is to, I have to like beat this guy up. And it's like, you are so far removed from any sort of functional criminal organization. And this is exactly why, because you see a problem, you think you're just going to beat me up? Like, no, I'm, I'm so far ahead of you in this game. This is how and Batman has been able to out, 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 outplay you all. But that actually comes back later with the Joker and Batman, where uh, Batman is trying to beat the shit out of the Joker, trying to get information out of him. And the Joker's like, nothing. There's nothing your strength can do to help you here, I Batman. love that you're doing the voice. <laughs> it just sounds like a nerd. <laughs> ah, Batman. There's nothing your strength oh, can do. Batman. <laughs> you're, you think you're so strong. Oh. Oh, Batman, you're strong now. But I'm going to major and I'm going to become a lawyer. And then we'll see who gets all the girls. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it come, but it comes back to that. It kind of making the, the parallel between like Batman and these thugs. It's like, is, you know, realistically, is Batman that that any different by comparison? Like, he's still using brute force to get what he wants. Yeah. Um, I think... Uh... I think this, yeah, that's 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 like the fun sort of ethical dilemma of the entire movie, which is like, how far do you really need to go? Like, how how much are you willing to like dump dump your hands into the filth to like clean it all up? And at the end, it's like, yeah, we're just like this mass surveillance apparatus, like we're completely absolving every citizen in Gotham of all of their privacy. And why are we doing this? Because I can't figure out any other like. This is this is the level of control you need to exert to get rid of the Joker. Yeah, you need to cross ethical boundaries. Yeah, and and even then, it wasn't enough because Batman, the Joker, had still had another plan. He was like, "Yeah, I already like turned Harvey Dent, so that's gonna blow up in your face." And it's like, "You motherfucker!" Like your Batman is gonna have to kill somebody, and he did. He killed Harvey Dent. He's gonna have to kill somebody and break his. Like he's gonna have to cross that line in order to um uh, to uh to uh, enact peace, which is exactly what the Joker wanted. I'm going to make you break that rule, Batman. And then we'll see who gets all the curls, he said. Truly, we live in a society. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, yeah. I totally agree. I'm, because I'm the Joker, of... like, I, I get the actual impression that the Joker really doesn't care if he lives or dies. Yeah. He could have died at any point. And, uh, yeah. He just, he just does. There's um, he just is. The novelization of the Dark Knight Rises has like a line where it's like all the criminals were released from Black Blackgate Penitentiary and Arkham, except for one, and it's like, oh, the Joker is still locked up, and he's just like locked in a cell where the only person he can drive insane is himself. And I'm like, that is such like th that is not this <laughs> that is not this Joker like. I can fully imagine yeah. after this Joker is put into Arkham or wherever, like in four months, he like just escapes and he just yeah. lives a life. He just like, okay, I'm going to take the clown mask makeup off and I'm just going to live in like in Jamaica or wherever. Like I, I, I did my thing and now I'm gone. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Johan in uh, Monster where it's like uh, this mm. guy, like what, what's next for him? Oh, just like... I, I did my thing. I'm gone. See ya. Uh, I, w I will say, though, that there was a little bit of it, but I feel like the, the movie could have done a little more to be kind of critical of Batman as a character. Because there was something that was touched on where the kind of the idea of like, well, a lot of this shit is happening because of Batman. But I don't think they leaned into it hard enough. Yeah, they talked about that in the end of Batman Begins where Gordon was like escalation. It's like, oh, well, we use, they start wearing, you know, we use a bulletproof vest, they buy armor piercing rounds. And he's like, well, you're dressing up in costumes. What are they going to do? And then he hands him like the Joker card. So it's like, yeah, like this insanity, it, it sort of follows its own logic. Um, yeah. But and that's that's what makes it so cool in the end. It's like, the final thing you do when you have all of this power, all of the surveillance power, you just click a button and it blows itself up because he is, in the end, a good guy. He's the Dark Knight, as yes. Gordon said. Uh, but an 
Another thing I thought was kind of weird, though, with this movie is this is only the second movie and Batman's already thinking about, like, retiring as Batman. Like, he wants Harvey Dent to be the one to, uh, you know, to, to be the face of the, the city, to, like, to be the hero that, that, that the city needs and blah, blah, blah. But, like, I, it's a little bit strange mm. for that to be the case. Like, we had the origin story with the first movie, building up how he became Batman. The second movie's already like, oof, all right, guys, it's time to retire. Like, Yeah, and it's like, the next movie talks about, like, his body's been completely destroyed by his activities. And it's like, he was Batman for, like, two years. <laughs> like, people wouldn't have this super nostalgic impression of him. They'd be like, Batman, you mean that guy we read about in the newspapers ten years ago? I, like, the Dark Knight... Maybe it should have been like, oh, this is eight years after Batman Begins. Because it just takes place like two years after. Like you need, I think you need mm-hmm. a bit more t- of a time jump. I, th- I think it, I, I agree. It needed a bit more of a time jump. Um, or, may, or maybe another movie in between. But like, then again, that's probably unreasonable. Yeah. Uh, but again, I just think this idea that like. We did get another we movie have... in between. They did uh, the Gotham Knights uh, animated anthology movie. That doesn't fucking count. That's uh, that's apparently in this continuity. Batman fights fucking Killer Croc in that movie, and it's like Ooh. this is not in the same continuity, guys. No, what is this? No. That's uh, ridiculous. But that movie, like the that anthology movie, is really good. It like it's on paper, it's set in the same universe. It's not in the same universe. But it's a good movie. Um, fuck! Yeah. I wanted to say something. And I forgot. Oh no! Too late, bitch. No, it's gone. Oh, you were gonna ask me about gone. my quiz. Oh yeah, I, no, no. I wanted to ask um, this whole Shut idea up. that Batman is now like a wanted criminal. Does that happen in like? Is that played into in Rises at all? Oh yeah. Is that's it? like that's I, why I they're hunting we'll him see. at the beginning. They're like, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna get the guy who killed Harvey Dent because they play up Harvey Dent as the savior. Okay, and that's like the whole thing about Bane when he's like, he reads uh, Commissioner Gordon's retirement speech that Gordon didn't read, where it's like Harvey Dent isn't a hero. Harvey Dent threatened to murder my son, and I watched Batman take him out and then take, like, take uh, blame for all of the murders Harvey did. And it's like, oh, so the entire piece that you two established, yeah, it was all based on yes. a lie, and that's how uh, Bane is able to uh, sort of int- reintroduce the chaos into the city. Okay, that's a that's uh, an element that's really well, well played up in the I'm next one. I think. To that. Well, we'll get into it when we get into it. Yeah, yeah. I I don't have much more to say. I just want to say that I love the ending of this. I, like not the ending, but uh, the the whole scenario with the two boats, the two ferries is um, like the criminal um, taking the detonator and just throwing it out the window. Yeah, yeah, after that, yeah, that's a good scene. That's that good. moment stuck in my head from the first time I saw it. I love it so much. It's so great because he's like he looks at the policeman, like the captain, and he's like, "Just give it to me." And then when this is all over, you can just tell them that I took it by force. And it's like nobody wants to be responsible for this. And he's just like he he surrenders it right to him, and then he just throws it out the window because like. This criminal, he's like blinded in one eye. He's a giant dude with like t- tatted up. This is like a career criminal. But even yeah. he knows like, no, we're not doing this. We're not playing this ridiculous game. What's wrong with you? And none of the and, other prisoners act up. It's yeah. like, yeah, we, we didn't want to make this choice either. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's so it's beautiful. Done. Yeah. And, and I, I also liked the line where he was like, I'm going to do what you should have done 10 minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's you know it's just thematically this this whole rejection of what the Joker is about, you know mm-hmm. this whole hope um, the city can be better and we as like every single individual can be a better person, and, I, and doesn't I, necessarily I will... need to be corrupted by extreme it, circumstances. Mo- moments like that do a good job of reinforcing those themes, but I think some of the dialogue does a really bad job of it. Like when fucking. Uh, Batman, when fucking Christian Bale is saying shit as a grown-ass man, he's like, I wanted to inspire 
good. And it's like, who fucking talks like that, dude? Like, yeah, uh, like, again, this is why, uh, like, in Batman Begins, he his voice was so much more palatable. He was, he just talked kind of like this. And it's just like, oh, okay, that that's good. But then it got worse no, in Rise it in Dar- The Dark Knight. And everyone made fun of it when The Dark Knight was out. Everybody was making fun of it. And the, vo- the voice got even worse in Rises. In Rises, he's like incomprehensible at times. What, it's, well, so it, is at Bane. times it's and it's so no, stupid no, Batman too, too because like yeah yeah I'm saying both oh I thought but you like, said no the, that was Bane no no I'm saying but so like is Bane there's scenes, oh, yeah, yeah. there's scenes where he's talking to people that know what he sounds like like yeah. when he's talking to Lucius as Batman but he's still doing the voice like L- Lucius knows who you are why are you talking <laughs> like that I thought it's a voice changer that he just activates and like. Uh, I, I don't think they ever I, talk about a voice changer. I don't remember one. No, but, I don't uh, remember. I, I, don't I remember always anything assume, about that. I, wait, am I supposed to assume that he actually just does the voice on his own? That's, I, that's I've never, I never heard anything about a voice changer. There was a voice okay. changer in Batman v Superman, um, but that's basically it. Um, there's whatever, a, I don't uh, care. There's a voice changer. Yeah, whatever. We can we we imagine a voice changer. It makes more sense that way. What's your favorite gadget in this movie? Uh, the motorcycle. The motorcycle, that's good. Bogan? Yeah, that's the first, the first thing that my mind jumps to. My favorite... Because I never liked I never liked the tumbler, so the fact that it blew the fuck up and turned into a motorcycle instead, I was like, hell yeah, that's way better. My favorite gadget is that can opener he has in the start of the movie. Did you guys notice that? What? what? No. So... When Batman is chasing Scarecrow in that vo- white van, like there's a moment where he's like, ch- he's hanging on the side of the car, and he like s- begins to cut the side of the van open. Like if you watch, oh, the... oh uh, yeah yeah okay I remember I remember yeah, yeah yeah it's like it's some weird kind of can opener knife that he just like it extends from his elbow to his wrist and he's just like trying to s- cut the entire like the the exterior of a car open with that and it's like. I love these hyper specific gadgets that Batman has. More of that, please. And there was like an entire uh, section of it in the behind the scenes where they're like, yeah, you know, we actually like, there's like documents that showcase how like the belt transforms into this knife and how it like springs out and how Batman, like, it's got like a mechanism that shoots it out and just he can grab it and it just activates in his wrist and it's like, the section ends where they're like, you probably aren't going to see this, but we decided to do the work anyway because we just really loved this idea. And it's like, wow, you guys had a lot of passion for a, for a gadget that shows up for three seconds. <laughs> and, but, but, but it works. It's like, because, yeah, uh, like it, it makes sense. They thought it that far through, even though it's, it's such a blink and you'll miss it thing. It's like that uh in uh that actor who played uh Theoden in Lord of the Rings, he talked about this uh when ever he was putting on his armor, there was like an elvish poem that had been inscribed on the interior of the armor that he would always see as his hat was sort of like as it was being put on him, and it was like nobody is going to see this but me, but this is really helps me get into like the mindset of this guy because this is like a really regal armor that has this lore built into it and it just it has some effect on you when you're doing the performance and this is like yeah it's yeah yeah obviously sorry i've been talking for a long time it's fine (laughs) i think i think we can all agree that it's a really good movie that is still holds up for the most part um but i still stand pretty firm in what i said before that like it, it's it, it's I guess it's not really fair to say it because uh, the the hype that that was this movie when it first came out was unreal. Oh yeah, and there really isn't anything that can compare to that. But like, I do implore people if you haven't seen this movie in a while that you should go back to it. If you like, if you've held on to that feeling of like, Oh, this movie is like a fucking masterpiece or whatever. No, go back to it. Watch it again. 
It's still a really good movie. It what? still holds up. What? It's, it's it, I'd even say it's great. But is Why it you like this? Fucking... away from people, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, is it a ten out of ten fucking masterpiece? No, it's a it's a good action movie. What I like some, about the Batman movies with interesting ideas. What I like about the Batman movies is that more than any other superhero movies, they're really interested in like exploring hot topic issues of the era. Like this deals with like the Patriot Act and government surveillance and all that. But like the new Batman is all about like internet isolation and extremism and like these people who are becoming isolated from the world. And it's like, meanwhile, you have Spider-Man and what's he doing? Oh, he's just meeting other Spider-Man and then everybody in the cinema claps. Great. Great job, guys. Yeah. Dude, remember yeah. in Spider-Man <laughs> when they actually like they revealed his identity at the end of the second movie and then it's like oh how is spider-man gonna deal with that well he's gonna go into the multiverse and turn back time obviously so like we want to show actual fucking consequences for what happens yeah spider-man homecoming was such a breath of fresh air fresh air i felt yeah. but i'm like yeah. then i watched far from home and i'm like wow i am immediately tired of this <laughs> Far From Home is so bad. Yeah. And people like that movie. It's, it's amazing that crazy. it's the same. It's like the same director, same writing team, I think. It's like, what happened here? What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I never watched either. I don't really care to. Homecoming, I would recommend. I think that's like a genuine good sort of standalone movie. I, I do think Homecoming is the best MCU movie. Oh. It's, it's, probably, it's definitely up there for me. I, I I was going to say, like, oh, yeah, I think Ragnarok is, I really like that one. But after Love and Thunder, I'm like, man, like, retroactively, I don't like Ragnarok that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it was that bad? Yeah, it was so bad. It was just so bad. All right. Poor Christian uh, Bale, man. All right. Is that, do we do we have any final words on Dark Knight? Duh. I think I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Like if I were to give 10s. Oh, yeah. I think um, I was I was going into this movie um, ready to be disappointed after the first like 40 minutes maybe because it got kind of unwieldy. I think you can cut out some stuff from the beginning. Uh, I understand why it's there. All the setup with the mobsters and shit. I think you can kind of you don't need the trip to China and all that. It, it's funny. I think I had a similar experience where I, I remember in the beginning, I was just like, I was like, oh, man, this this is feeling very disappointing already. But then, yeah. I, I, and then when, once the movie hits its stride, I was like in it and I was like, oh, no, no, this is still good. This is still a good movie. Yeah. And then after the Joker gets captured, uh, I think it becomes really, really, really good. Yeah, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. I love it. I think this is like the perfect kind of action blockbuster movie where if you're if you don't care about the themes you can still watch it and it's a it's a great movie but it also yeah, has it, those themes yeah. if you want i think that's looking back i think that is why this movie succeeded in the way it did is because it if you're looking at it from a purely shallow perspective not that there's anything wrong with that but you know <laughs> if you're just going in and you just want to see explosions and shit you're gonna get that but, you know, the game, uh, the, uh, the movie also does have some some more stuff going on. You know, there's uh, there's ideas to think about. Uh, it's thematically pretty consistent and uh, explores its themes pretty interestingly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah like, it's, it's, it's got something for everyone. Com compared to the MCU, right? Or everything that came during the MCU time from... Uh from dc it's like i don't have to rate this movie on a superhero movie scale like this is just a real movie yeah with with actual yeah, depth and things to say and i feel like you get none of those from anything that the mcu has put out yeah it's it's funny because i feel like i'm definitely the most negative on this movie uh, between the three of us that being said i would sooner rewatch the dark knight than I would watch any of the MCU movies. No. Yeah. Like, 
I'd rather rewatch The Dark Knight than watch a new MCU movie. I, I, fuck it, I don't. I really don't care. There was an interview with Christopher Nolan, and he's done a lot of these. Every time he's in an interview, where there's always like, ask questions about Batman, and whenever there's a new Batman, people are always asking him, "What do you think?" Um, and he actually like he was filming Tenet when Robert Pattinson got the role as Batman, and. Here's the, like, this is the behind the scenes story that I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but when Robert Pattinson talked to Christian, Christopher Nolan about like, oh, they just, I'm Batman. I just got the part. Christopher Nolan responded with just a wink and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you did that. You, you, you beautiful madman. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> cool. I like, that's, I like to that's think that's true. That's the kind of shit true. I like to hear. I like to. Th- That's the kind I, of shit I like to hear. Yeah, but I I don't know if it's real because like I feel like Matt Reeves he had it like his he 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 was either gonna have Robert Pattinson or uh, Nicholas Holt as his Bruce Wayne. Those were his choices, and it's like, wow, we we are in the right universe. Imagine Nicholas Holt as Bruce Wayne. Good lord, that would have been terrible. Who? It would probably have been fine, but I prefer Pattinson. Nicholas Holt? Let he's play, he's Beast this? in the X-Men movies. He was in Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. He was probably Jack in that. Okay, I'm seeing him now. Um, I don't recognize his face. He's just like, uh, whatever guy. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we ended up with the correct Batman. I know a lot of people make fun of him. Oh, he was in Twilight. Blah, blah, blah. I, he did a great job. Yeah. Like, he, I... I, I I, and I think we can all agree that his Batman was a lot more interesting than Christian Bale. Um, I'd, I'd need to see more of him before I make the call because we've got so much like of Christian Bale's life. I think Christian Bale I mean, is a uh, sure. I th- I think the thing about Christian Bale, and this translates over to Robert Pattinson too, and I'm sure I've talked about this before. You can't make an American play Batman. You have to find some British guy to do it because you need somebody who looks like old money. Right? Christian Bale, you look mm. at him and you're like, that's a trust fund kid from a family who made their fortunes in gold back in the 1870s. And you look at Robert Pattinson and you're like, this kid has never like seen a street in his life. He's lived a sheltered life. Like They have that sort of look about them where they look like upper class, crusty aristocracy. And I think that's the look you need for Bruce Wayne, which is why whenever these cast like Ben Affleck, I think did a great job, but he looks way too down to earth and human for Bruce Wayne for me. That that is a good point. I I do agree with that. No, I got that down. <sighs> but per- personally, I just like Patterson more as Batman because. Especially in the mo- in the uh, yeah, we still need to see more movies. But like, there was so much focus on Batman as a character in the Batman, mm-hmm. and it felt like they they took his character in interesting directions, and they they did a lot with him in a way that I felt really quite wasn't the case with Christian Bale. Yeah, which Christian- is not really necessarily like the fault of the actors, you know. Christian Bale is really only the main protagonist of. Like he's the main protagonist of his trilogy, but he only really in the first one is the movie about him. Like they do a lot with him in the Dark Knight, but he's just overshadowed by Heath Ledger in like in this much more yes. flamboyant performance. And, and in, Gordon and Harvey Dent. Yeah, it's like who is the emotional center of the movie? Arguably Harvey Dent. And uh, while in while in the Batman, Batman himself is the emotional center of that movie. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe we do need to see more movies, but at least for right now, like I'm much more compelled by his portrayal of Batman, the way that Batman is handled in that by comparison where Batman begins. Um, there was some of that, but like. I don't know. I just didn't find it super engaging. And then in Dark Knight, like you say, he just gets completely overshadowed by Joker. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. I think that was a good discussion. All right. All right. And you yeah. boys are sure so you don't want the Batman up? quiz? Last chance. No. Last chance. 
we're good. All right, this, this is your this final chance, going though. On for too long. This is for real, for real, the last chance. <laughs> we need to end this because I really need to go to the toilet. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll just end it here then for the sake of uh, Boken's bowels. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's it. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Let's not talk about what we're working on. No. Yeah, I, I Boken didn't say needs that. To go to the bathroom. No, it's fine. <laughs> I feel bad for Boken. All right. Okay. Fine. Fine. Acer, you're working on Silent Hill 4? No. But I may be doing that in like a few months. Currently, I'm just okay. working on like Armored Core, and I'm also uh, getting back to work on my game. COVID wrecked me. That's like a month of just like that took like a solid month out of my production schedule. I'm so behind on everything. But yeah, getting better, getting better. That's good. Uh, working on anything else, or that's it? Well, that's a that's an interesting story, Daniel. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna delay it. Uh, no, that's, okay. as it stands, that's all I'm working on. Okay. Uh, the only things I'm working on are possible scripts, right? Again, I mentioned the the milk inside, outside of a bag. I'm kind of flirting with maybe doing something on that. And I'm also thinking of maybe doing a video on the mysterious atmosphere of Shadow of the Colossus. I think it's kind of strange that no one has talked about this yet. Yeah. You would think that'd be like an obvious slam dunk of a video, but no one has done it. So I'm like, well, fuck it. My, let me, my first let me do reaction, it. my first thought to this was clearly someone has already made a video on that. No, they haven't. I, I looked it up. I looked it up. No videos, not even an editorial, not even like a random article somewhere written on a blog or no, nothing. And I'm like, this is such an obvious, like, duh thing to talk about. Yeah. But, uh, I guess I'll do it then. It's got to be me, because no one else is brave enough to do it. Have All you right. seen, there's one video by uh, Writing on Games, where I think he talks about the empty spaces of Breath of the Wild. I think he brings something like that up there. I'm not sure, though. But I think he makes that comparison of, you know, the open, just the writing segments with nothing in them that are important for the pacing and atmosphere of the game. Okay, I don't think I've seen that. I'll check it out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for everyone. Boken needs to go to the bathroom, so we're going to end it here. It's been Essays and Espresso. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.